<clears throat> Welcome guys. Welcome to Classic Cast 14. Uh, I'm here with Tips Out Baby. I'm here with Stay Safe TV. And we got a whole lot to talk about. We got a whole lot to talk about here this week. Uh, in case you guys haven't heard yet, there is going to be a classic demo available on the floor at BlizzCon. And uh, there were also some alleged, alleged classic leaks that came out yesterday. And uh, I think this would be something fun to talk about. You know, it's, it's alleged, right? But it might be something fun to talk about here today. Uh, but first, let's go ahead and talk a little bit about the last couple weeks of Classic Cast with, uh, with vanilla level designer John Statz, with team lead Mark Kern. What is something that really stood out to you guys in the last couple of weeks? Tips, do you want to go ahead and start us off? Yeah, sure. Um, I mean, the first thing that jumped out at me right away was the chemistry between Stats and Kern. Hmm. You can tell that they had a really good working relationship over the years. For them just to be able to pick up where they left off and deliver what I think was like one of our best classic casts ever was amazing. <laughs> um, but in terms of the actual like gameplay and, and everything we talked about on the technical side, the biggest thing that surprised me, and it might seem a little minute, but it blew my mind, was the fact that the server populations, originally, Alan Adham's vision was a 2,500 concurrent player cap mm -hmm. on the servers. And it was changed later to be a technical limitation, but originally, 2,500, that's what the game was designed for. And I think that has serious ramifications on what we see for Classic, because as we know, 2,500 has kind of become you know, considered to be on the low end. So we'll see how it plays out, but that that blew me away when I heard it. Yeah, for sure. I think uh, I, I think it's funny, uh, like the fact that like a lot of people want a lot bigger servers just because of, uh, you know, things, things that we've gotten used to a little bit more recently, maybe in recent years. But uh, I think that 2500 number being the uh, original like designed cap for the servers really kind of tells you a lot about like what what would make the server like feel lively or like feel dead uh i, I think something at 2500 would be um would be just fine because nobody really knew the original server caps back then like as far as the player base goes yeah it was all speculation tips i gotta say you're definitely right like once once they once john and mark got going like they really started jiving they were just like they were digging memories out of each other it was crazy it was great to just listen to that it was awesome and we, we sort of just let them talk a lot. We didn't talk very much this last class cast because they were talking so much. And that's exactly how it should have been, in my opinion. Yeah, no That doubt. was crazy. Um, but for me, the thing, that, the thing that stood out the most for me was, you know, in recent years with WoW, um, dungeons and raids have been very hallway, hallway boss, hallway, hallway boss. And so it was awesome listening to, to John explain why he, um, why he explain, uh, designed dungeons in a way that made them feel more homey and natural. For example, Blackrock Depths. They have a dormitory. They have a place where the where the where the dwarves are sleeping and eating and resting, and it makes it feel more like a natural environment. Uh, Moradon is like a natural cave system that has been inhabited by monsters, and it's not just like weird, arbitrary, just like hallway, hallway boss. Like, under what circumstance would that dungeon be made in game? You know, like it doesn't seem as believable as an actual environment. You know what I mean? Does that make sense? So that's what was coolest to me was to hear his philosophy about why they design dungeons that way. Yeah, for sure. For sure. I think for me, um, there's a couple things. I mean, it, it's kind of hard to to even think about this, but when they said WoW was almost canceled, like I, yeah. that, that kind of blew my mind. <laughs> it's like you think about it 14 <laughs> years later, it's, you know, it's the biggest MMO, the most popular MMO of all time. I mean, it's not even, it's no question, right? Uh, yeah. I think, I think that is pretty wild. Uh, also, something else that was really interesting is whenever they talked about the first expansion, you know, everybody loves Burning Crusade, right? Not everybody, but a lot of people really love Burning Crusade. I know I do. And it was almost, uh, or I guess originally, the original plan for the first expansion was actually a South Seas expansion, which is essentially what BFA is, yeah. you know, with Kul right. and everything. Um, yeah. I mean, you can even see, like, there's uh, the, the orc starting area. They have that quest where the, you have to kill the Kul Marines in the in the keep i mean it's in the game it was in warcraft uh and right down below ratchet there's the kultiris keep with the pirates there right below ratchet remember that that's there true go. there you go north watch keep yeah uh, so um so yeah i don't know i i think uh those those two things really for me are what really stand out for sure for sure um 
kind of kind of going forward. I mean, is there anything you guys really want to specifically touch on from uh, the last couple of weeks? Anything else that you guys want to touch on before we we go to to the more recent events? I just thought it was a great cast, man. Like honestly, they did such a great job. Um, another thing that kind of stood out to me was was the whole Alan Adham thing. I know, like especially uh, Jeff Kaplan is somebody that's like greatly praised in our community, and for good reason. Obviously, he did a great job with the BlizzCon 2005 panel. He wrote all the quests, stuff like that. But to hear how high, like how highly they praised Alan Adham, and I think Mark Kern even said something along the lines of it was Alan Adham's vision that produced Vanilla WoW. That was shocking to me too. I had no idea who this guy was. Been covering this game for so long and playing for so long. And the Steve Jobs of Vanilla WoW was just undocumented <laughs> up until that point. So it was, it was cool to hear that too. Yeah, I think that was really cool. Really, really cool. Yeah, it was crazy. I mean, for me, for a long time, I've, I've known... For me, I don't know if you guys agree with this, but Mark Kern has been... Like, everyone knows who Mark Kern is. Like, he's... In my mind, I, I sort of, like, put him on a pedestal. He's, like, the vanilla guy, you know? Mm -hmm. And so it was really cool, considering he hasn't done a podcast or a video about Vanilla WoW, uh, maybe ever, that I'm aware of. Yeah, it was really, really cool never, to yeah. sit down. Never. It was mm -hmm. really, really cool to sit down and hear him just kind of uh, decompress about it. That was really awesome. Mm -hmm. Yeah. For sure. Um, so let's let's go ahead and move on forward, guys. Let's go ahead and move on forward to uh, the more recent stuff, right? Uh, something that a lot of people were very, very excited about. I, I know certainly all three of us were really excited about it. Uh, was the fact that there is going to be a classic demo. Uh, there is going to be a playable classic demo on the floor at BlizzCon. It's something that a lot of people were really... Uh, really hoping for a lot of people were really hoping for that um, you know in terms of speculation and, and just you know the, the whole talk since the classic announcement is like it'd be really awesome if we got that um, but not only that I, I think it's kind of crazy that they're taking it like out of house basically and they're they're allowing people to to play it and try it out and do the demo from uh, from home with a virtual ticket I think that's something that uh, I think that says a lot to be honest not just necessarily about um not necessarily about like you know what they're doing or, or all that, but it says a lot about how far along they are in development and how confident they are in, in that it's gonna gonna work. It's probably gonna be a little bit of a stress test, but um, I don't know. I, I think that the, there's a little bit of confidence there, which I like. Yeah, I, I definitely think a lot of people would have speculated at a, some sort of playable version on the BlizzCon floor, but to actually be able to bring it home and play it for six days or five and a half days from home. Like I, I didn't. I am. I was blown away by that. That's crazy. That's that is. That's phenomenal. Yeah, and it's available right now. Um, I believe on the downloadable servers. Uh, you can't download the game, but it's there in the patch notes. And the crazy part about it, I think back to what John Stats said when we interviewed him. He said, "Best industry practice. Whenever you have something complete, it's usually put on display like six months later. So there's a, there's a big chance they've had this demo pretty much ready to go six months ago." And I can only imagine what that means now. I mean, God knows if they're playing an alpha internally, if they're doing something now, maybe the game's done, who freaking knows? But <laughs> <laughs> I think it's, yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah, it's a good sign, man. It's a really good sign. And to add to that, both John and Mark, uh, with the, within the, our last two Classic Casts, they were not very optimistic about Classic Cast release, or not Classic about Classic WoW mm -hmm. releasing anytime soon. They thought it was going to be maybe 2020 or 2021. So the fact that, you know, things are coming along so smoothly that we're having a, a play at home demo very soon, um, like 30 days from now, 32 days from now, we can, we'll be playing a demo of Classic WoW on our computers at home. That's a crazy thought. That to me shows how seriously Blizzard is taking Classic WoW development and how fast they're pushing it along. I think it is a very, very good sign. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, get wrecked, John. Just letting you know. Okay, yeah. <laughs> and and so. yeah, just to, just to like piggyback off of what Tip said is... Um, Curran also mentioned that Blizzard historically has kind of like kept all their stuff kind of close to the chest, right? Kept their kept their cards close to the chest, and uh, if something is ready, like not just industry practice, but Blizzard for sure really um, emphasizes this, is like if they tell you something, that's not necessarily what they have done at that point. That's just what they're willing to tell you, and uh, you know, we speculated that a little bit with the uh, uh, with the water cooler, right? It's like they're probably farther along than this, but this is just what they're willing to tell us, and it could be another case of that here, right? With the uh, with the demo and and them pushing it out for a uh, for a little testing period for the week after BlizzCon, which is really really awesome. Um, for me, I mean that's that's the most exciting part is the fact that they have something, not necessarily that we get to play it. I don't know how much content 
there's actually going to be on this demo. I don't I don't think it's going to be anything crazy. Uh, I mean, they they said they specifically stated that it might that it's going to be like two zones, right? They said it's going to mm-hmm. be two zones. So people are saying maybe it's it's going to be yeah. like Westfall and the Barons, maybe and. Uh, there's going to be like a few talent points that you might get to spend is what Ian said, I believe. Well, let's go ahead and read the quote. So they said, players will have a chance to explore and enjoy a limited questing experience through a pair a pair of classic early level zones, one horde and one alliance, mm-hmm. and experience firsthand our recreation of the original Azeroth. They mentioned uh, on, on the video, uh, the five minute video they, they released, uh, Ian said you can put in some talent points and he said maybe you can kill some Quillbor and some Defias. So in my mind, I'm thinking Elwyn Forest, maybe Westfall, and Duratar, maybe the Barons. Um, yep. I, I'm really not expecting much, but ideally, uh, the ideal scenario is if, if we can level one to twenty, and I don't think that's what I think that's way too much content. I don't think we'll get that much. But if they level us, if they let us level one to twenty, that would be crazy. Like that would be dream scenario. Yeah, yeah, that's a lot of gameplay, dude. And vanilla, is, even one to ten. One to ten in vanilla will take most people. I would say people that have never played the game probably have five hours. People that have played the game, it'll go a little faster than that, yeah. much faster than that. But but in general, like five hours, nine classes, that's like 40 hours of content, man, which is pretty freaking good, uh, if I say so myself. Plus, you get to see it on the other faction. Look, at the end of the day, I'm very happy with, with the demo, what they're doing. The fact they show us the talents shows that we'll finally get to see which talent points, you know, system they decide. Um, we're going to learn a lot about, you know, did they update the graphics? Did they not update the graphics? Mm-hmm. How do we access the game from Battle.net? Um, is it, you know, are we going to be able to right click and add friends of the opposing faction? I think a lot of this stuff will be answered or at least um, presented to the players. And I think that's part of the reason why they're doing this. Yes, it's a stress test. Yes, it's a great opportunity to gauge interest. But also, I think they want to see the player's initial reaction to how they've laid the game out. I think they just want to a little bit of a litmus test to see if, if players really like this or not, or they should scale back maybe some of the adjustments that they may have made. Do you guys want to talk about, so we, we didn't plan on talking about this, but this is a, just a thought that I had. As testers playing the demo, what are we looking for? Are we, we're, so we're looking for new new textures, new shading, mm-hmm. new lighting. We're looking to see what debuff limit they're using. That's mm-hmm. like that's the big thing on my mind. How many debuff slots are there? What do you guys think? What else? Yeah, uh, I mean, I, I think I think those are some big ones that you mentioned. Um, I would look at the UI, right? See yeah. see if there's any any notable changes to the UI. I, I assume you know uh, a lot of any any sort of UI updates that I would expect would probably be in the line of potential texture updates, like increasing the resolution of textures. Uh, you know, mm-hmm. like we've talked about, like we've almost beat it to death, right? How much everybody has talked about like what they you know they, they a lot of people don't want to see updated models some people do but uh, i would say the majority of uh people who've been involved in the classic community and have been excited for classic for a long time or hoping for classic for a long time uh would like to see the, these old models uh be preserved in uh in, in wow classic so yeah that's you know pretty much that yeah i, I mean don't know if you guys have done this sorry tips uh you, i'll let you go ahead i was just gonna say um the first button i'm pressing when i log in is escape and I want to see all of the options. I want to see if there's a shop. I want to see if there's, you know, what, what are the new interface options are. Um, like you said, graphical settings, stuff like that is fan. Mm-hmm. Anything that would, you know, differentiate the game from what it is today. And um, mm-hmm. yeah, the smoothness, the, like that's a big thing for me. Like how smooth is the game going to be? Retail is a lot smoother than vanilla in terms of like moving your character around and like panning and stuff like that. View distances are a little bit different. So just the overall smoothness, fluidity, and responsiveness Tab of the targeting. game. This is one Tab thing targeting. Tab targeting. Well. Spell queuing. Yeah, yeah. Like all, yeah. it's just the whole feel of it. Yeah. These are kind of... I was going to say, if it's you're running right. a 1.12 client, um, you can actually open a console command window and you can manually enter in improved graphics commands. And it makes the game look way better, but it's not available within the, within the base graphics UI, uh, within the interface, I mean. You can't do it in-game. You have to do it through a console command. So maybe those are like when they say updated textures and graphics, it might just mean integrating those into the into the, the, the interface. I don't know, but you you can just naturally as the game was back in the day. If you if you tweak it, you can make Vanilla WoW look very very good without doing anything too crazy. You mm-hmm. know? Yeah, I, I think so too. I think uh, I, I mean crap, dude. As it stands, and I, I've said this, I've said this plenty of times before, but WoW was kind of the first MMO in the current generation of MMOs. So you had like the EverQuest, the Dark Age of Camelot, um, Asheron's Call, you had, you had all these other games, right? You had, you had all these other games. And 
I feel like there was like a there was a big change in graphics, not just for MMOs, but for a lot of games, kind of around 2004 time, where we saw we saw WoW. I, I believe that's the same year as like Source Engine came out for like Half Life. Like I, I remember that being a year where like graphics became like way better. And I thought with WoW, I was like, you know what? The graphics for this game aren't as good as Dark Age of Camelot. That's what I thought at the time, but it kind of has this like cartoony, timeless feel to it. To where it's still like I, don't, I still think it looks good, but if I go back and play Dark Age of Camelot now, I don't think it looks good. But back then, it's it's very very weird. It's very very strange. But uh, I I really think that Vanilla WoW just kind of looks good as is. It's held up, man, so much. Every time I go back and watch a, an old Vanilla WoW video, I'm like, you know, you don't expect much if you haven't looked at it for a while. But every time I, I relook at it, I'm like, wow, this game it really has held up very well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Open up any other game from 2004, including Halo 2, any other game, and you'll just be like, wow, this just looks so much better than any of these other games. Like, it just really held up. Mm -hmm. For sure. Uh, let, let's see, some other things that they that they mentioned about the classic demo. Um, mention, it, it mentioned Quillbor and Defy Us, right? So that's kind of like, you know, when we're talking about speculation of, of where these two zones could be. Um, that's where, like, Westfall comes from. Like some of the Defias there, uh, outside of uh, outside of Dead Mines, and then the the cool boards and the Barons, so yeah, it's just uh, I don't know. What what are your guys' thoughts on that? I was gonna ask you guys if you were to put your money where your mouth is, what would you bet the content is we get on the demo? I mean, personally, I would. It's so hard. I I think it'll be very limited. I would bet you can play a human or an orc, and I bet you will be able to level one to twelve and be Endurator or Elwin. I bet that's all you'll be able to do. One to twelve, maybe. Um, you mentioned putting in a couple, a couple talent points. That means more than one. Everyone knows you get your first talent point at level ten. So obviously, you'd have to go a little bit higher than ten to have a couple of them. Um, and really, if you really tried, you could get another one or two levels out of Elwyn Forest, for example. If you were grinding mobs or you did mm -hmm. every quest in the zone, you can maybe get to eleven or twelve, maybe one to twelve in Elwyn Forest and Durta. What do you think? Yeah. Um... I, I think you kind of run out of quests at that point. In in Elwyn Forest, at least. I mean, I, I have more experience playing Alliance and Horde, for sure. Um, but I, I think you'd kind of run out of quests, and I don't know if they would do the demo like that, right? Where they would it wouldn't be super straightforward. Where it's like, here you go, you're here, do these quests. You can grind mods and stuff if you want. But uh, if you were to sit in Elwyn, and they were just to let you get, like, get as far as you possibly can in Elwyn... I think that'd be funny. <laughs> but I think it definitely well, be funny. Have hogger raids and like it would be great, dude. Yeah, it would be. It would be, be funny, but uh, I I just don't know if that's what they would do, right? Yeah, and it's weird. Like when you say Quillbor and Defias, I don't think Duratar and Elwin. Like Defias, there's Defias and Elwin, but the quests associated with the Defias, there's the Red Bandana quest, mm -hmm. but but that's not what I think. I think I have Kobolds when I think Elwin, to be honest. Yeah, me too. And. Uh, yeah, and Defias, and okay, Westfall. The entire zone is, is based around that story. And then same thing with uh, with, with Durotar. I don't think Quillbor. I mean, I think Baron's Quillbor, but obviously there's some Quillbor quests in Durotar, but it, it's not the first thing that comes to my mind. So I'm not sure if that was intentional or if Ian forgot a little bit or that's just what he associates it with. But when I first read it, I was like, okay, maybe they put you in Baron's Crossroads and uh, maybe in Westfall and you're level 10 already. And uh, you go and you do a couple of quests, you get a level or two, and that's it. I don't know. I think it would be a far more intuitive just to start you off as a fresh character in Northshire and um, in Valley of Trials. But it just it seems very odd to me that they said Quillbor and Defias because I don't I don't attribute Elwin or Duratar to either of those things really. Well, and, yeah, and... I'm I'm not sure they'd they'd start they dump you off at level ten. I think it's counterintuitive, like you said. And also, yeah. I think having that moment of watching the human intro cinematic. You know the humans and the defy blah blah blah, yeah. and then you you load in and you're at Elwyn Forest and level one. You see all the level ones around you. Like that's a very iconic moment. When yeah. You're playing Vanilla, right? And I I don't think they'd want to lose that. Like that's 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 something I think that they would want to give to players again. Yeah. yeah I think so. I I just think the combination of everything they said doesn't really like line up. Yeah. Like to say like a couple talent points, and then to say only two zones. And it, it just makes the most sense to start everybody at level one and just, like, give them L1 Forest to do whatever they want or give them uh, Duratar to do whatever they want. Now, yeah, how, how far does Duratar go as far as levels? Because that, that's, like, I, like, get, I, like, anytime I've played Horde, I've just kind of, like, moved along. I haven't really, like, screwed around too long in there. 
Depending on the quests you do, 11 or 12, but depending on the quests you do, basically. Okay. So, I mean, yeah. that's, that's what it could be, too, then. I mean, who knows? I, I've always tried to... I mean, I, I think the farthest I've gone in Elwind is, like, level 10. I don't think... I could think I probably could have gone to, like, 11 or something. But um, that'll be very interesting. That'll be very interesting to see how it pans out. Yeah. And it's strange. Like, one of the reasons why part of me feels like they might start at a later level... I mean, do they really expect people playing on the BlizzCon floor to sit there for, like, five hours to get to level 10? You know what I mean? Like, there's no way you're getting to... If you're playing at BlizzCon on the floor and no. you're starting at level 1, there's sure. no way you're getting to level 10, period. Like, it's going to take you at least... The most seasoned players, an hour and a half to two hours at least. And uh, that's assuming, you know, there's dynamic respawning yeah. and no one's taking your mobs and stuff. It, it seems yeah. like a very, yeah, steep requirement. For those of you that are unaware with, like, leveling quickly in vanilla WoW, if you have, like, a two, maybe two and a half hour, one to ten time, that is phenomenal. As mm -hmm. far as going to 20, we talked about leveling one to 20 on the demo. If you're a speed level, that, that might be nine or nine and a half hours. If you have a sub 10 hour, one to 20, that's very, very good. So the average gamer, it might take you 20 plus hours to get one to 20, right? I think that's just way too much content for the demo. I think, I, I don't know. Yeah. I think... Uh... I, I do think this. Everybody who has a BlizzCon ticket also gets a virtual ticket. If you have, like, a, a physical ticket, then you also have a virtual ticket, right? Mm -hmm. So they're going to get to play the game whenever they get home. I'm sure they're going to have, like, uh, almost, like, uh, stations. They're going to have a bunch of stations set up, and they're probably going to have people staffed to, like, help people log in with their actual accounts. So they might get, like, a 15 or 30-minute, or, or like, that's their turn to play. Even that's a long time, honestly, to get to play for like 15 or 30 minutes. Yeah. Uh, so that it's, it's probably just going to be like you can sit down maybe even 10 minutes and like create your character and run around a little bit. But it's on your own account. So whenever you go home, you're going to be able to play on, uh, on your own account. You're already going to have that crea uh, character created. Maybe. I yeah. don't know. That's just something that that's, I would That's the real W. That's the real win is being able to play from home. Like, I think you're right. On, on, the de on, the, on the BlizzCon floor, if we can play for more than 15 minutes, I'll be shocked. Definitely, if you play more than a half hour, I'll be very surprised. I would mm -hmm. bet money they'd, they'd kind of shuffle us along. I was thinking it'd be really funny to, considering the content will probably be so limited, to have like a demo gold farming contest. Whoever can farm the most gold by the end of the demo would win something. You know, just like some way to make it fun and competitive. I definitely think there's gonna. I, I definitely hope there's gonna be ways for like communities to like do events and stuff. Like even after BlizzCon, like for the next couple of days after. I hope it's not like super sharded. I hope uh, some people were suggesting it could be a solo player experience. I don't know about that. I certainly hope not. But yeah. um, I hope there's gonna be a way to like get everybody to like roll on a specific server, do a hogger raid if it's an Elwin, like Stay Safe said. Um, just do something fun. Try to kill. Try to do Dark Storm's quest at like level one or something if you're horde. Like that'd be pretty cool in my opinion. Yeah. So, for those of you guys who don't know, uh, tips, stay safe, and I actually are going this, for all three of us. This is going to be our very first BlizzCon, so we don't really have a lot of BlizzCon experience. Uh, supposedly, I mean, uh, this is what Vakir and Midnight say that last year it was actually th they had 30 minutes that you could play mm -hmm. at, at the stations, and then uh, also they usually have like. Uh, create a character or like pre-made characters they don't let you log into your actual account so uh that's just something something to note i guess that they've done in blizzcon's past that we we have no experience with so this is uh that'll actually be the first time we all get to finally meet in person together so that'll be that's fun true. that'll be fun yeah yeah, yeah. yeah absolutely <laughs> shower stream <laughs> i don't know about that one uh <laughs> but um something else to kind of talk about is we got the vibe. We got the vibe. We, we kind of got the impression from, again, this, this is from John and Mark, who, who haven't been with the company for a very long time, um, but they were there for the original development of the game. They said that they thought that, well, actually, Mark said, Mark said it'll be ready when it's ready, and he, he really he didn't want to speculate on any of that. Uh, John thought it would be a few years. And to your point, stay safe, to your point, to kind of like show like, how, how important Classic really is to kind of, like, get something pushed out before BlizzCon right after BFA launched. I mean, because we're still, like, a lot, a lot of people say, like, the BFA hype is starting to die down, and, and maybe it is, but uh, we're still technically on the up from, from where BFA was at in Legion. And right. I, I think for them to, like, start pushing out Classic stuff and all this stuff is, is a very good sign, and that's what we were all hoping for. We didn't know if that's what they would do, but that's what we were all hoping for. Uh, so I, I think it does show that Classic was very... Uh, it's showing the classic as a priority for them, and it's important. I think that's cool. 
Well, definitely. And I mean, if you're one of the people that hates Blizzard and thinks Blizzard is only doing this to make money, I mean, that it's still still same thing. You know, every month that they don't release Classic, they're losing millions of dollars. So they're financially incentivized to get it out as soon as possible as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't think that's the case, by the way. I think there's a lot of very passionate people that are working on this project 100 percent that, that love Vanilla WoW. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think so, too. Um, yeah, I mean, in terms of like release timeline, God, it's really difficult to say. I think a lot of it depends on patch 8.1 when they're planning to release that. And I would expect um, very shortly afterwards, like a month or two after that drops, is probably when we'll get some kind of beta, alpha, public testing, I think. And then depending on how long that Blizzard wants to take that, could be three to six months, that's when we get the official release. But 8.1 rolling out probably in December because of all the data mine Christmas stuff in it. January, February, man. You never know. Possibly March at the latest, yeah. Yeah, you never know. Uh, mm -hmm. Now, they surely are going to make a lot of... Uh, I, I'm just... Because here's the thing. And we've talked about this. I, I think all three of us have probably talked about this separately. We, we haven't really talked about it together. But um, when it comes to getting a BlizzCon virtual ticket, when you get that virtual ticket, it, it would make the most sense to get the ticket for everything that it comes with. You get you know perks for every I, I think for pretty much every blizzard game you get something for the virtual ticket and then you also get access to all the coverage and the streams and whatnot so you know they're, they're definitely going to make some some extra money i think that's i think that's no question they're going to make a few extra bucks for people that are just going to buy it for the demo but um you want to know something yeah uh, I, I have to give credit where it's due i saw countdown to classic he's in chat post this on twitter he said if you go to a baseball game and you buy a five dollar hot dog or you buy a hot dog you're not paying the entire you're right. not paying the ticket price for the hot dog you know you got the game plus the hot dog or whatever right so so that that's such a great way to phrase it i think <laughs> yeah yeah that's good that's good for sure um hot dogs <clears throat> man good stuff uh is there anything else that you guys really want to see from the demo i know uh, before we before we move on is there anything else from the demo that you guys uh uh what are, what are you guys plans for the demo that's really what i should say you know, one thing that just pops into my brain is we need to see if there's an honor tab, if there's a PVP window, PVP page, and we can get oh. HK. Because if there's an honor system, that is actually, that has giant implications for early game vanilla. So we need to see if there's an honor system, honor tab, HK capabilities. Um, that's huge. That's very big. Yeah. yeah. I think that's a huge one. That's a really, really good one. Uh, we talked about it before, right? So if, if they have the honor system put in from the very beginning, then there's going to be honor gear and honor rewards and it kind of changes the meta a little bit of how people gear up, how people prepare for raids, especially in terms of, uh, especially in terms of speed running, right? Whenever we talk about a lot of stuff, there's so much that we talk about that relates more to the, the high end. And sometimes you need to, you do need to reel it back a little bit and realize that there's, there is, there is a 1%. Right. There is a there is a percentage of the player population that's very small that tries to speed run and push for, you know, server first and this and that. And that, that's that's just what they do. But that's not quite going to be everybody. Uh, I do think it does change the meta a little bit for those guys. If there is PvP gear in from the start, particularly like warriors or uh, melee classes in general, uh, having the rank 14 weapons early on is, is huge. Having the gear is really huge. Uh, and I yeah, would say well, it even changes I mean the leveling process, too. It definitely does. I mean, people will level uh, level more slowly in farm HKs at certain leveling brackets. And I mean, as far as like it, at the way it impacts level 60 gameplay, you can have an entire roster full of rank 14 melee DPS by the time your guild steps into Blackwing Lair. When Blackwing Lair comes out, that trivializes the content. It makes the content more uh, uh, less difficult. It definitely does have late game impacts. I think also for a new player, for a new player who's never played Vanilla WoW, uh, you have to worry about learning your class, leveling up for the first time, you're messing with professions, you're enjoying the dungeons. If you throw on worrying about grinding PvP, grinding honor, to, and you're worrying about ranking up very early on, I think, it, I think it is very, very overwhelming for a new player. I also think for the longevity of Classic WoW, the more like hype releases they have, that makes Classic WoW more fun. Okay, guys, on month four, the honor system is out. On month six, we're adding BGs. Those are like hype events the community can sort of rally behind and look forward to and, and make content for and, and just get just get excited for. Right. So I, I hope I hope that they delay it. I really don't want it to be out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm the same way when it comes with the honor when it comes to the honor system, honestly, like trivializes content. It changes everything you do at level 60. I mean, if you're a warrior or uh, even a rogue, even a rogue, I would say, I mean, like, depending mm -hmm. on the class, but uh, you start grinding right away at level 60 honor. 
it changes how you approach the game entirely. And if you're in a lucky position where you actually get the rank 14 weapons, it's great, it's awesome, you're dominating, but at the same time, you're not getting an upgrade for like a year and a half. So <laughs> there's that too. Um, I mean, we'll see, uh, you know, Esfen, you asked, uh, you know, what do you guys really want to see? Mm -hmm. um, I want to see that the servers can hold up. That's mm -hmm. the big thing for me. Um, there's going to be a lot of people playing this demo. There's going to be even more people playing Classic. A lot, you know, we experienced the BFA launch. I think uh, you guys had a tough time on launch, right? Disconnecting, yeah. stuff like that. Yeah, yeah it, sure. was, it was not ideal. Yeah, I can only imagine uh, Classic's return, how much hype that's going to generate, how many people are going to be playing. I really want to see something special with the servers. I hope we don't get disconnected. I hope we don't get thrown in queues. And I hope that even though it's a playable demo, Blizzard's, you know, trying to uh, address this issue as soon as possible. I'll say this. I've talked about this, I think, in a video and on stream several times. And who knows if they'll do this, but it, it kind of makes sense to me. I want to know you guys think about it. I hope that with the demo, you know, and we don't, we, they might not necessarily make us aware of this, but I hope with one demo server, they have a 2,000 population cap, and on another server, they have a 4,000 cap, and maybe one that even goes higher than that. Uh, there are different variables. Maybe one server has slightly increased respawn rates. Maybe one server has dynamic respawn rates. They're testing different things. This is this can be a stress test and testing different variables to see which, which version of Classic WoW, you know, what server type is the most agreeable. There are different variables like that, and then they take feedback and information. Which one did the players enjoy the most? Um, I, I hope that they're doing that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's really good. Uh, I think for me, kind of this is more this is more on tips tips point. Uh, I something I feel very strongly about, and I, I think the overwhelming majority of people feel this way as well. Sharding. I, I, I really hope that we don't see any form of sharding. I, I don't know. It might be they might try to implement something as a one-off thing for the sake of the demo or whatever, but I, I just don't want to see it, right? I, I want to see them put it in naturally and just see how it plays out. You know, I, I don't – like, I mean, they might try and do something as a precaution, but I, I would rather them just play it out and see see how it goes. I, I think a lot of people are not happy with sharding. I understand what it does for, like, stability and this and that, but – I want to see the people that I'm playing with. I want to, like, if I'm, I mean, like, if I want to go and find tips or if I want to go and find stay safe and we're all leveling and, you know, Westfall or Elwyn or Barons, wherever we might be, I want to be able to go on that server and go find the guy, you know? Yeah. I'm just going to say it. I think if they're sharding, this game is dead on arrival. Like, I'm just going to say it. And there's nothing, nothing feels worse than having a, a guy leveling next to you and he runs 20 feet to your left and he disappears or you're leveling solo and you've killed a bunch of mobs in your area and suddenly you're you're ported into a new shard and all the mobs are respawned because now you're you're in you're in a new shard and now you're like surrounded by mobs like, imagine that happening in the middle of a murloc camp you're you're just mm -hmm. ported into a new shard and you just die immediately yeah it would, it would be it would yeah. be terrible it would be absolutely terrible yeah, well, dude, the world I, pvp implications too man but yeah good yeah answer. both of those things i remember stay safe was doing an iron man challenge early on and you had made it to like level 45 or something and yeah. you phased yeah. in you were in the middle of a quest and you you switch you switch shards or something i don't know what happened but all of a sudden like five giant spiders just like spawned right on top of you while you were killing another one and like the one you were killing disappeared and then these other spiders spawned and just like killed him and he was doing an iron man challenge he had to delete his character uh, and then with World PvP, one time Savix and I were running around doing uh, kind of some new school Paladin Police Force stuff, and we were chasing down a group of Horde, and I had not done the quests in that zone yet, so as we're running along, all of a sudden I get oh, phased yeah. into a different zone, and I was just like the most, like, my heart sank, dude, because we were going to kill these guys, and it was going to feel so good. <laughs> yeah, yep. yeah. Who here has been trying to make a raid in war mode with your friends, maybe of 25 or 30 people? And it seems like it seems maybe like 25 people plus you risk the you risk the possibility of people in your raid in your own raid group phasing off into a different shard. You you will have people in your raid group that you can't even play with. You're oh, yeah. Saying, it is ridiculous. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's such a pain. And I think the issue with it and actually somebody posted this on MMO Champion a couple of days ago. I think he was talking about sharding. Um, it seems to be such a core part of Blizzard's approach to launch days now, but there is an alternative. And like the alternative is to have more servers with moderate population caps, let's say 3,000 Blizz like population caps, and just merge them over time if, if they start to dwindle in population. I mean, I think that's a far better alternative, mm -hmm. far more vanilla esque 
You know, sharding is not a requirement by any means. And if you have overpopulation, you can add dynamic respawns. At least that's a better alternative than so disconnecting let me, people. Let me ask you, and I don't think this will happen, but I, I've heard this asked before. If there are server die-offs, and like I said, I don't, I'm not worried about this, but if there are server die-offs, would you rather them offer character transfers and you can transfer to any server you want or just merging several small servers together? What would you prefer? Um, the vanilla precedent is to do the latter, I think, right? I'm sorry, to do the former, did, um, where they offered people to get off the servers, right? I think they did merges, uh, but I don't know if that was in late vanilla or there were some servers that... I, I remember there were servers that... Uh, were like dying off and they had to open new servers at one point so like they didn't have aq40 open like well after the like it, I, man i'm trying to remember how exactly they did it but i do believe they did some merges yeah. i think they did merges also vanilla well continued to grow through its life they were actually making more servers they added new yeah. new service throughout the life of vanilla well. i would personally prefer server merges i don't ever i don't maybe into like the very last six months of Classic Rail like they did in Vanilla WoW with the Nax patch. Mm -hmm. I don't want server transfers. I don't want that at all. I would prefer them merge servers. But at the same time, there are people, there are people who might only want to play on very small servers. Like that's their ideal. They might only want to play on a server that only has 400 active people, you know? So you shouldn't, I don't know, like you, are you going to force those people to merge into, into a new server or what? Yeah, I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure they did. And I know for me, like I've told this story before, but I used to play on Illidan. I used to be Illidan Alliance, and then I transferred to Keldazad. Uh, I believe it was after the Nax patch. I'm pretty sure it was after the Nax patch, and uh, Keldazad was then made my home. But uh, I do know that they had server transfers in late vanilla. I don't know if they had paid server transfers, but I know they certainly had uh, population-based free server transfers to certain servers from from certain servers, basically. Yes, they, they, they did. did. They added server transfers. I think it was with, with Nax patch, and you could do one once every six months. You had to pay for it, and you could only transfer it. You could transfer from PvP to PvP or PvP to PvE, but you could not transfer from PvE to PvP. They didn't want people leveling on the you know PvE Care Bear servers and then transferring to a PvP server and, and, and killing low levels and stuff like that. So they wanted the consistency there. Mm -hmm. Look at the freaking attention to detail, dude. Like, look how much they were trying to preserve the feel of their game. Do whatever they can to make sure, like, people experienced it right and stuff like that. Um, I personally think it's kind of unrealistic to expect them not to have transfer services. I wish they wouldn't, but I feel like they're going to. It's just part of the, the BNet services now. I hope they don't. Um, in terms of, like, merging, I remember there was a Wildstar post. <laughs> Wildstar, rest in peace pretty soon. But... Uh, the MMO Wildstar came out like five or so years ago and almost right away within a couple of months servers were dying off and I think there was like a PR press release that was released and in it they said the reason why they weren't merging servers was because of the negative connotation that has like it makes it seem like the game is dying in the case of Wildstar the game was dying but like uh, I, I think it's just kind of like a an optics thing where it makes it seem like the game is dying it's it's not necessarily good for players you know feeling that way and and yeah there might be players on servers that don't want their servers to be merged i rolled on a 400 pop server because i don't want to be grieved or because i i want to experience classic well like a solo experience i mean you know how are you going to take that away from somebody I think if they open up and say, hey, guys, listen, Classic is going to launch, and uh, we're not sure exactly how many people are going to play, so we're going to make too many servers. We're going to have overflow servers, mm -hmm. and down the road, we will very likely have to merge servers. I think I if know. they if they open with that, I think that optics thing is, is negated. What do you think about that? I agree. I hope they open with it. I freaking, I, I hope they're cognizant of all of this. Like, this is one of the biggest things, personally. Like, sharding will destroy Classic WoW. You said dead on arrival, dude. I'm right there with you. Like... If they implement sharding and it's it's implemented beyond like the first five levels of the game, it is DOA for sure. Mm -hmm. Now, here's the thing with sharding: it doesn't actually change the majority of the end game content as far as battlegrounds, as far as uh, raids go. It doesn't change the content, but the problem is, is this isn't retail WoW, this isn't BFA, this isn't Legion, and it's, I mean, it's World of Warcraft, and it lives up to its name. It's about the whole entire experience of the game, and we'll I think that's something a lot of people feel really strongly about. Yeah. I agree. It, it depends on how many people they... Let's say they have sharding. It depends on how many people they allow per shard. Let's say they have it in Vanilla WoW. You, we, have you guys seen videos of epic, you know, world PvP battles? It's 200 Alliance versus 250 yes. Horde. It's crazy. Yes. Or Blackheart yeah. Mountain battles. 
or you're or just running from thorium point flight path with your guild 40 people down to black rock mountain mm -hmm. in retail wow you can't do that you can't you can't have a raid group of 40 people like do you you run the risk if you're in war mode or something you run the risk of just half your raid phasing out you would never be able to have those world boss battles sharding like you cannot have that with sharding it's impossible yeah mm -hmm. like please no blizzard please <laughs> please no yeah i think uh you know, I think everybody's kind of hoping for the best there, and um, like I said, while it doesn't change like the the end game like instanced content, it, it still does change the feel of the game throughout the entire course of the game, and even stuff like world bosses and world PvP and stuff. You know, yeah, I think I think it's not good. I think it's really not good. <clears throat> um, is there anything else you guys want to talk about with the demo? I, I know, like I already asked that, but we just kind of kept going before we uh. Before we go on to the uh, alleged, alleged leaks that came out the other day, alleged leaks, yeah, I think this is let's talk about them, dude. Yeah, I just have one more. This is more of a question for chat because I tried to find the answer to this question. Um, the issue with the demo, uh, and we've kind of talked about this off stream a little bit. The issue with the demo, it, it seems like it goes live at 10 a.m. Pacific time based on the release, and I think that's the same time of the opening oh. ceremony. Does anybody know or anybody that went to BlizzCon have any experience with these demos? Is there a chance that it goes live for people at home before it goes live at the actual convention center? I just want to throw that out there real quick if, if anybody knows that. But mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, that'll be that'll be interesting to see how uh, how exactly that plays out. Um, I'll tell you with the demo announced um, and I'll, let, let me give a little bit more perspective with like the whole $50 ticket thing like so people, so I, I, I was able to get a hold of three BlizzCon tickets, what, four or five months ago, and I and we, we were going to buy them as a group for ClassCast. We're all going together. It's going to be great. And so I was just, luck of the draw, I was able to get three of them. And I didn't even know that I was getting virtual tickets. We got bonus virtual tickets with our physical tickets. And so for people that have already bought their tickets, their virtual tickets or physical tickets in the last couple months, um, this demo thing, we just got, it's just like a bonus loot. We just got bonus loot for it. So... Uh, yeah, like we've already had it, but I will say with the announcement of this demo virtual ticket thing, um, I might cut my trip short. I might, I might fly back Saturday night so I can come up and play the game. <laughs> you know, go, yeah. going to BlizzCon is kind of bittersweet now. Yeah. 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 <laughs> can you imagine being on the BlizzCon floor? All the freaking computers are taken and you've got to wait in like a 10,000 person line and everybody else is playing the demo at home. That would suck. That's the big fear, honestly. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. A lot of people have been asking me like, "Are you gonna stream the demo?" And I'm like, "Well, I will, but probably not till I get back home from BlizzCon." <laughs> like, yeah, like, yeah. I, don't, like, I mean, it's just like you know, uh, it's just the nature of it, I guess. But um, it'll be good. It'll be fun. It'll uh, it'll be something very, very uh, something to look forward to for sure. Uh, so let's yeah. talk about this leak, uh, alleged leak again. And first off, before before we even get into this, right? This is something that's more fun to talk about. It's from some random guy who posted on the forums, uh, he posted, I guess, on the the EU forums, the German forum. I don't know, but it, it was an, it was a German post where basically he talked about this and that. Like, okay, this is what somebody who works at, I, I believe he said Activision, who's like somehow involved with Blizzard, told him through this means, and he's seen this. For all we know, it, it could be like a load of bull crap, right? And more than likely, it probably is, but. Uh, it is. It has been news in the community uh, over the last 24 hours, so I think it'll just be fun to talk about, um, you know, how how we feel about uh, or how we would feel if these alleged leaks were true. Um, but yeah, I, I think uh, I, I think surely this is something that you got to take with not even a grain, but maybe a whole bag of salt. So it, it's just one of those things that more than anything, it's fun to talk about. Um, <clears throat> I'll go ahead and. I'll, I'll go ahead and read off the bullet points, and then we can go from there. Uh, the bullet points were, Classic WoW is in a pre-alpha state. Mostly all the quests are done. They started working on Dungeons & Battlegrounds recently. Uh, 17 devs are working on the game. Two former NOS devs for assuring authenticity. Uh, they don't think there will be a long beta phase. Uh, maybe a two-week open beta. Uh, the only changes that they foresee are improved textures and spell effects, but still using old models, improved view distance and colorblind mode. Uh, Battle.net will have some restrictions on PvP servers. Eight servers per region. Those eight servers would be four PvP, two PvE, one RP PvP, and one RP PvE. Uh, no in-game shop to start off the game. Uh, sub will be included in Retail WoW, or you'll pay less for Classic only. 
the launch will be around April or June of 2019, and that there will be an announcement and gameplay at BlizzCon, uh, which that already came true. And that's kind of, that last bullet point is really kind of what uh, I would say set fire to this thing, is the fact that they set it two days prior to the actual announcement. But Yeah, so that, that part's already come true, right? Yeah, that part's already come true, but I, that's not really, it's a good guess, Right, it's a good guess, but that's something that we like people have been talking about for months. Like, hopefully, this happens, you know. So, right. I think more than anything, this could just be like a, a really well thought out thing. But um, let's go ahead and talk about it. Right? They they say classic WoWs in a pre alpha state. Mostly, all quests have done. They've started working on Dungeons and Battlegrounds. What What are your guys' thoughts? What are your guys' thoughts on this? Just as a whole, let's start off as a whole. What are your guys' thoughts on this? Do you want to do total thoughts at the end? What do you want to break them down? Okay, let's point bring them down point. first. Yeah, okay, let's, let's, let's do bring them down first. Let's start with the source. Let's start with the source, okay? This, like, when I look at leaks, I start at the source. Yeah. Kind of work my way back. So, uh, just for context here, okay? Um, a lot of people group Activision Blizzard together. They are technically one public entity, but the way both of these companies operate is very different. Mm -hmm. um, there is very little Activision oversight on Blizzard and vice versa. I would be, I would be very, very surprised if blizzard had like a slew of activision employees just hanging out at their hq every day peeking into the classic wow room like yo what's up guys what's the update you know what i mean or like taking a head count on everybody in the in the freaking room developing um that the activision offices are in santa monica california the blizzard hq is in irvine california it's about a one and a half to two hour drive between the two if you live down in southern california you know what i'm talking about and um and for whatever reason somebody at activision if we're to believe these leaks Somebody at Activision drove down to Blizzard HQ for whatever reason, somehow got the clearance to go into the Classic WoW dev corner, let's call it, did a head count of everybody in the room, then hit up his homie in, in Germany and he's like, yo, dude, Shiz is going down. 17 developers working on Classic WoW, blah, 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 you know? And then that guy posted to the EU forums. Ah, you know, I, I don't know. That, that's, you know well, what I mean? If, to, to defend a leak, and I'll play devil's advocate, if they're making Classic WoW, they're making this game in how many, what, 15, maybe 20 different languages. So this is an international game, um, and emails exist. They don't have to drive down. I mean, I'm sure this information is probably is spread throughout some people that, you know, have signed NDAs. And on top of that, um, I mean... I, I'm, not, I'm not sure about that. I, I imagine that Activision does have oversight as far as release dates and demos and alphas and betas because you have to imagine as a, a company like this they line up their releases with other activision products or other blizzard games so it's all very well coordinated so i'm not i'm not sure about that the granular information eight servers per region 17 devs working on the project and like for me it's about security clearance so like if you've ever worked for like especially like larger companies if you've ever been like a pencil pusher in a large company you know that there's like a lot of clearance issues like Big corporations, they only want you to work on what you're working on. They don't want you to know what's going on outside of your scope. And uh, I, I know that Blizzard operates in a similar way. Like people on the Diablo team have no idea what people on the WoW team are doing, have no idea what people on the Hearthstone team are doing. The only time they all kind of get the inside scoop is when there's something ready to present. And uh, usually it's only a little bit in advance. I mean, it's not, and that, I mean, I just, I, I can't see somebody at Activision being privy to such granular level de data and, you know, 17 devs working on the game, plus two former NOS devs working on it to, to even know that eight servers per region and the breakdown of server types for PVP to PV. I mean, somebody said a memo <laughs> that was like, yo, guys, uh, this is the server breakdown. This is this is exactly how many servers we're having. It, it seems a little bit far fetched to me personally. Uh, it could be true. I'm not. I'm not saying it's not true, but it seems a little far fetched. I mean, what what I would say, even at a higher level than all this, like like any random jackass can just go and like make an account and post on the forums. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like any yeah, anybody yeah. could do. Like, like, dude, maybe it was me. Maybe maybe I did it. Maybe I went and threw a bunch of words into Google Translate in me. German. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it was me. No, yeah. you know, it could have been anybody, right? And they yeah. could have just made up all this stuff and 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 said all this stuff and. I, I don't know. I, I I think that alone, like without like actual like names and and real sources, um, it's just hard to put any stock into this. But again, we're well, gonna talk about it anyway because it's fun, right? Let, yeah. Let's look at this from the from the point of view of it's fake, but 
are these things realistic? Could yeah, these I things like that. be true? What, what, yeah, let's yeah. look at it that way, okay? Mm -hmm. So the first one, Classic WoW is in a pre-alpha state. Mostly all quests are done. They've now started working on dungeons and battlegrounds. What do you think? Mm, I, I, that wouldn't surprise me. Yeah. To be honest. I, that would not surprise me at all. Um, I mean, think about it. What they said in the dev water cooler with they were they were already working on a third prototype right they said first prototype this second prototype this and then going forward right so they're working on third prototype and this was what about three months ago i think this was about three months ago and then that's what they were willing to tell us then kind of going along with the thought of like blizzard playing their cards close to their chest and you know what are they willing to tell us it would not surprise me if that was the case if that it already was in some sort of pre-alpha uh friends and family whatever right it, that that would not particularly surprise me um is it likely no i think it's just as likely as it is unlikely but uh it, it wouldn't surprise me it's an educated guess like i think that's again going back to the dev water cooler update that's more or less what was implied they were in some kind of internal testing period um you could call that a pre-alpha you could call it an internal alpha uh it wasn't a big leap to suggest that i think if you ask the vast majority of people including the people in the chat right now where did you think Classic WoW was in development a week ago? People would probably guess some kind of internal alpha sort of thing. You know, again, derived from the Dev Water Cooler update. Uh, I think they might be actually a little bit further beyond that. Like, he specifically says pre-alpha. I think they might have an internal alpha going. And I know it might be like semantic difference or something like that. But um, I do think that by the fact that, that they are releasing a demo to the public and by the fact that John Stats said they typically release something six months after it's already been completed i think they could be 20 30 50 people could be playing this right now friends and family who knows i mean yeah. possibility it's very likely it could be friends and family i mean all of us actually with bfa it was like six months ago or seven months ago we got alpha access alpha invites to bfa and the game was definitely there like a lot of the quests were there um the game was far along obviously it wasn't finished and i can tell you playing on the bfa alpha what we weren't able to test were battlegrounds and dungeons we were able to do quests, so that sort of that makes sense to me. But the, the, the pre-alpha claim here, technically everything that comes before the alpha, which is a lot of work, is pre-alpha. So it's a very big, it's a very big time. Like it's yeah. a, it's a safe thing to say that. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's not specific enough. And it sounds it's somebody said all. something in the chat. I I think uh, let me see if I can scroll up and find it. Oh yeah, it's uh, this was said by Leafly twenty six. It's believable enough that it sounds like it's true. And I think that's what a lot of people, that's that's what makes a really good fake leak. If it's believable enough that it sounds true, usually people kind of pick up and run uh, run with it. But yeah, I mean, technically, it, it wouldn't surprise me. Wouldn't surprise me. Yeah. Uh, I think the next point, the 17 devs are working on the game, two former NOS devs for, it, it, two former NOS devs for assuring authenticity I think that's that just seems maybe maybe it's the translation maybe it's the translation but to me it's kind of ridiculous that you'd bring in a third party to verify something that you made yourself you see what I'm saying like Blizzard made the game like it's Blizzard's game so why would you bring in a third party for specifically assuring authenticity like I I don't know maybe maybe it is mistranslated uh, that and that's that's kind of my it would uh, it would have to be because I think that just sounds absurd. Like I it, totally it, believe it. That sounds. I, I totally believe that they that they have those two people on the team. I'm gonna. It might be unpopular. I totally believe it. Let me read something here for you guys. Give me a minute here. This is from April fourth, twenty seventeen. This is a Jay Allen Brack interview. All right. Okay. He was he was asked, has yeah. Blizzard maintained a relationship with the people behind the unofficial legacy servers? I know the Nostalrius guys visited Blizzard HQ at one point. Jay Allen Brack says, we have talked to Damon and Viper, the leads for that project, a handful of times since that visit. Follow up question. Do you see them being more heavily involved in WoW Classic? He says, J. Allen Breck, we would welcome their involvement for sure. Damon and Viper. Me. I think one of, the, one of the challenges is that they're both French, so there's a little bit of a visa concern, but we'd be open to it. They're very passionate and strong Blizzard fans, clearly. So I think, I, actually, this sort of might lead to the idea that this is a, a faked leak, because... Jalen Brack is talking specifically about two Blizzard or two Nathalys developers. If if I was going to fake a leak, I would, I'd look for something like this and and mention two, and it's sort of like a breadcrumb kind of deal, you know? Yeah, but but here's where the story gets crazy. And get those uh, Illuminati emotes ready in the chat. 
So um, uh, last night I spoke to Nano from the Nostalrius team. He was uh, one of the five people that was invited to Irvine to present to Blizzard all the Nostalrius stats and stuff like that. And uh, Damon and Viper were of the five, as well as Tyriel and Athelion, and of course Nano. And what Nano told me, interestingly enough, I asked him, is anybody on the Nostalrius team working on Classic WoW? And he said, I've kept up with Athelion and I've kept up with Tyrell, and uh, they are not working on the project. Now, Damon and Viper, on the other hand, who were specifically mentioned by JL and Brack here in uh, the interview Stay Safe mentioned, Damon and Viper have gone MIA. And uh, they went MIA about a year to a year and a half ago. Now, the reason why they went MIA, or the reason uh, Nano told me they went MIA, was unrelated. It had to do with some drama going on behind the scenes. But it, it's, all, it's just funny how it all kind of lines up timeline-wise. A year and a half ago, did they start working for Blizzard? I have no idea, but uh, and, and Nano says he's not sure. But he, <laughs> there you go. There Look, you go. There's a lot of there's yeah. a lot of speculation. Okay, there's a lot of speculation that could possibly be had here. Uh, I mean, I would say that it does line up. Okay, but just because it lines up, I mean, who knows? I mean, they two guys that nobody has heard of at all. Two guys that nobody has heard about at all since they left the team. They were all in the NOS meeting together, or the, the NOS Blizzard meeting together. All of a sudden, two guys disappear. They go off the grid. And then this leak, I mean, you heard about this yesterday, right? Yes, yes. You heard about this yesterday. This leak also came out yesterday that two guys, two unnamed NOS devs are working. Uh, I don't know. I mean, uh, uh, I don't know. <laughs> I, 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 I got to take this thing off. I got to take this thing off. I mean... <laughs> I want to say, like, a lot of people are picking apart this assuring authenticity, Nostarius, like, why would they find those guys? You have to imagine, okay? I, I don't think this, the two Nostarius devs, if they're working on Classic WoW, they're not, like, in the trenches, you know, coding and scripting the game, right? They're not pushing things along. But I can totally imagine these people, uh, Damon and Viper, if it's them, are being used as a reference point. You know, these are people that have spent the better half of a decade digging through old web archive links and Alakazam and Thoughtbot, really looking day to day, week to week, month to month, how spell power coefficients changed, how itemization changed on certain items. Like these people probably know the way that vanilla items changed and spell power, like all this shit, you know what I mean? All this stuff, all this stuff, um, it, it changed very frequently and a lot of it might not have been documented. Exactly. <laughs> Blizzard might, ha might not have that. And I can totally believe that, hey, uh, you know, they're, they're in the classic wide development room. Hey, Damon, uh, Viper, does this look right that the, the, the rod of, of spell power change from seven intellect to 19 intellect on this day uh yeah sounds good okay great like just as just as a quick little reference you know like i can totally believe that like definitely paid consultants i, definitely I see you see yeah. for, for me like that seems that still just seems so far-fetched to me because like I, I feel like they would have this data right i mean we can talk about it like this okay so uh john and 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 mark were a little bit like iffy on some details of the game, right? I mean, they, they haven't worked for the company in years. Uh, they were a little bit iffy on some details of the game, and I understand how, like, devs don't always remember everything 100%, right? They've done other projects, and they've worked on other stuff in the meantime. But it's it's not so much that, like, the devs, like, being able to actively remember something. Like, I, I feel like all this stuff would have been documented. I mean, you know, this isn't a small indie company, right? <laughs> they, I would I would hope that they have all this stuff documented, and they, they've just kind of like had it stored to where they could go back and reference it as far as like looking at the numbers and, and the nitty gritty of stuff. Now, tips, you said like paid consultants. That is something that I could see a little bit more reasonable is like, hey, what does the data look like? Like uh, almost like demographic type stuff of, you know, looking at, okay, how long did it take the average person to hit 60 on your uh, server like how, how did this exactly. play out how did that play out when you guys made this decision to do this thing uh how like how did you see things kind of shake out and move throughout the world stuff like that seems a lot more that seems like something to me that's a lot more uh logical to ask them about as opposed to and i could be wrong maybe maybe stay there you're right maybe that's just stuff that got like lost over the years through the patches because it kind of got overwritten but i, I just i don't know i don't know I I definitely agree with you, S fan. Like when it comes from a community side and all the, the statistics that they release in their post mortem and even stats beyond that that were presented there, that stuff is information Blizzard doesn't have. Blizzard has no idea how appealing Classic WoW will be to the younger generation. NOST has that data, or at least some fragment of that data. Um, like you said, you know, 
retention rates, how long, you know, what's the average play session of a player? All of this information is just not available, but it was available on the NOS team. And for Blizzard, it's very interesting. Uh, now that you read that back, stay safe, uh, the interview, the visa thing. Now, believe me, I know a thing or two about visas and green cards, okay? <laughs> um, you don't need a visa to travel to the U.S. from France. The only way you would need a visa or a work permit is if you were planning on immigrating or if Blizzard was planning to bring them on as salaried employees. Right. The yeah. fact that Jalen Brack specifically mentioned the visa thing means that at some point that discussion probably took place and they were like, okay, we got to get them visas and stuff like that. That might be difficult. Who knows? It's not, it's not easy to get a work permit. You know, it takes time. Um, there's a lot of issues with international travel, especially now. But, um, but yeah, I mean, uh, I think that conversation was had and maybe the result was, okay, we won't be able to bring you over specifically, but maybe bring you on as consultants. You know, they, there's an off, there's a blizzard office in France, guys, there's a blizzard office office in Paris. So who knows? You know what I mean? Who knows? I mean, this is something that, yeah, it's just so like, I don't know. It, it, it's still like, it seems so absurd to me, but you never know. You never know. Um, yeah. Next thing. They don't think there will be a long beta phase and it mentions a two week open beta. I, I think that there would be a longer beta phase. I think that there's so much to test with this game, like in, in, in terms of like looking how things pan out and uh, with 16 debuff slots versus eight debuff slots. And uh, stay safe, you mentioned that's like one of the things you want to look at. And uh, excuse me, in the uh, in the demo is like if they if, if they have 16 or eight debuff slots, stuff like that. I, I don't know. That's, that's very, um, if they want to tune any of the early content as far as like, health wise like the, just like the values because you are going with 1.12 talents in what would be like you know 1.1 1.2 content you're going to have you're just going to do more damage your character your, your class is just going to be more effective like are they going to change anything there we don't know uh, that's why i always thought there would be a longer beta but i could be wrong i could be wrong about that what do you guys think this well this leak makes no mention of an alpha it's very likely that they're you know maybe have an internal build or maybe friends and family is going on right now but there's no mention of an alpha they could probably get a lot of that stuff done with an invite on the alpha and it would be public like people would be aware of it you know they'd give it to big streamers or whoever else they give it to you right with the guy like they do with bfa um there's no mention of an alpha stuff like you mentioned could be taken care of an alpha uh maybe a shorter two-week open beta that would be more stress testy how many servers do we need do we need bonus servers you know do we need to pay for more host like whatever it is you know what i mean um uh, it could it could be believable with tips what do you think um, I, I'm not sure if you guys are getting it on your end, but sometimes you guys are getting super robotic. I, and, I, I like, think it's very... Discord. I think it's the Discord servers are crapping out because I have good internet here too, and it's it's doing the same thing for you guys. Should we all quickly uh, leave the call and rejoin call? Do you want to try that? I don't. I don't think it's not that bad on my okay. end. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, you went you went full bender on my end. To stay safe at the very end there, so I didn't catch it. What was the question? Uh, what do you think? What do you think about about? about the the beta like uh, just the beta question here do you think a two week open beta a short beta phase is uh, uh is reasonable uh it's difficult to, to tell i think it depends on which philosophy blizzard goes with for the beta they've got two options the way i see it option number one they're fully committed to their vision of classic wow they don't need a long beta they just want to test you know certain bugs stuff like that stress testing server capacity stuff like that then they'll move on option two which is personally the option i hope they take is they want to solicit community feedback on specific things like UBRS sizes, like, um, you know, small things that are still considered no changes, but changed over the course of vanilla. Mm -hmm. And they want to take their time and test those things and have the community, you know, give their feedback on those things. That's the, the approach I hope they take. And that would mean a much longer beta for obvious reasons. So really depends on Blizzard. I think if they're committed to their design and they're just going to be like, OK, we understand what you guys want. We're going to roll it out. Um, yeah, I don't think it'd be that long of a beta, but um, I, I just I hope I hope they just let us test a couple of things at least, you know. So let me ask you a question. I see two weeks here. If it's a two week open beta and there's one thought on my mind, that's just enough time to get to 60. Let's say you can do everything. You can do pretty much everything, right? Mm -hmm. Are you guys going to try to get to 60 in a two week open beta? Are you guys going to, you know, prepackage pre your meals and, and, you know, it could be a complete sweaty, greasy, no life? Uh, when classic comes out, dude, like I'm prepared to gain 50 pounds. I've got my doctor on speed dial. The EMT is ready to go. I'm not moving from this chair. I'm eating Chinese takeout of pizza every single day, whatever it takes, dude. I mean, this, 
let, let me tell you this DX racer, dude. We're gonna get to know each other really well when Classic comes out. So, uh, I sure, sure, why not? You know what I mean? It's not like a moon from here, anyways. Yeah, yeah. I already gained my fifty pounds, so I'm I'm good there. <laughs> but uh, I'll play a lot of Classic, that's for sure. Yeah. Yeah. I I think I think with the uh, I think with the two weeks, I've never. I, I've never speed leveled in Vanilla WoW. Uh, I think in the two week period, I would like to spend more time testing and stuff than leveling. But I, uh, it, it's also very beneficial if if you want to speed level, to take that time and to figure out a leveling route because whatever you've seen on private servers is not going to be 100% accurate because of dynamic respawns and, I mean, just anything else. Like who who knows if the the quest values and stuff that you did, like the the XP values were right, or you know, it's it's. Yeah. yeah, and that's the thing. I mean, that's just the big thing with private servers, and I, and I think, pretty much, I don't know. I think most people know that that it's not going to be a hundred percent accurate to what it was, but um, that's the best way to find out is going to be in that beta period. Yeah, and by the way, a two week beta is unprecedented. That's why I don't think it's going to happen. Blizzard's never done a two week beta for any game ever. Um, maybe like their last stage of, of an open beta, they might have opened it up to the public for two weeks. But in terms of closed beta stuff like that, I would be very, it would be very surprising for Blizzard to roll out a product and be like, yep, two weeks of testing, then, um, then you know, it's good to go. But then again, we did that BFA. So <laughs> I don't know, man. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Who knows? Uh, the next thing on the list here, it says the only plan changes. Again, on these alleged leaks, uh, the only plan changes are improved textures and spell effects, but still using the old models, uh, improved view distance and colorblind mode, and the battle net will have some restrictions on PvP servers. Uh, for me personally, we we again stuff we've talked about for months. Improved textures uh, is something that we were probably going to see. Spell effects, I think, as long as there are not changing the animations and more so just like increasing the resolution of stuff that's kind of like the rule of thumb for me uh as far as things that uh they'd be looking at because like i mean you you want to make it look a little bit nicer without changing the models without changing the animations without this like kind of make it match your monitor because 1080p wasn't wasn't the standard now 1080p is the standard for monitors back then like people were using these freaking like big crt monitors and very few people had a flat screen i remember if you had a flat screen like <laughs> i remember having a flat screen wasn't always an LCD screen. It they had flat screen like tube TVs, like they they had flat screen CRTs right. for a while too. And so right. I mean like that like whenever people said flat screen like that was like the first thing that would come to mind. Um, I really do not want to see new animations or new models. I I really personally do not want to see that. I think uh, yeah. one especially because they don't exist in the retail version of the game. You can't even go back to the old old models anymore. So that's one. But also with the with the animations, I, I do think and I've talked about it before again. Animations have a uh, have balance implications you know let's say you're you're making uh blessing of protection or blessing of freedom more visible it's kind of like a beacon to like hey purge me hey dispel me uh i, I think stuff like that's not good um colorblind mode uh, i think if you're colorblind then tough luck you shouldn't no, i'm just kidding <laughs> I'm, I'm colorblind i'm colorblind yeah, I, I'm minor i have minor colorblindness no I, I think stuff like that like it's it's an excel accessibility thing i think that's not a not a big issue and then i think battle.net having restrictions on pvp servers is a really really important thing to uh to make sure that I they agree. do yeah mm -hmm. it's, it's funny you make the colorblind joke I, I think it was on mmo champion there was a guy he was like you know what with this he's talking about the leak you know what with this like he was being serious by the way. i checked his post history with this colorblind <laughs> mode this is it i'm walking away from classic wow there's too many it's too many changes i can't play this game colorblind people if you have a disability i don't want you like you know what i mean like oh geez yeah, yeah. Um, I'm very curious to know what the what the improved texture, textures and spell effects will be. That's something that we need to check on the demo, 100%, and take note of that. Um, but yeah, this all, this, all, this all seems pretty reasonable to me. Uh, this one, at least, this bullet point. Completely agree. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I made a video about uh, graphics a while back, like a long time ago, and my biggest argument against updated or, or a toggleable graphics option was, if it's going to take them more time to do it, why would you want them to do it? Even if it was optional, why would you want them to take more time to develop Classic? But now, <laughs> the way it sounds like, it's like if they're bringing the game down instead of bringing it up, um, in terms of like the client and stuff like that, if it doesn't take a lot of time, if it's something that flip of a switch, you can toggle it, they don't have to develop anything extra, I wouldn't mind updated textures or anything like that, but if you ask me straight up, I would prefer them not to be in the game. Um, but yeah, compatibility, 4K monitors, 1080p monitors, all that stuff. 
it would be pretty ridiculous to assume that Blizzard is going to be like, well, <laughs> screw you guys. You're you're playing on what is it, four by three or whatever it is. Like, it doesn't make any sense. Yeah, I think uh, I think I think we've pretty much covered everything there. Um, the biggest bit here, piece here is <clears> if true, the Battle.net will have some restrictions on PvP servers. That's been a, a hot ticket. Mm -hmm. And we've said before, you know, cross-faction inclusion is probably, it's definitely something that's going to happen on Discord and wherever else. You'll be texting your boys, you'll wake up, There's we got some Devil Sword battles, to t you know what I mean? Yeah. But uh, I, I don't want Blizzard to foster it in-game. I want them to try to shut it down in-game and try to stop it as much as possible. Yeah. Uh, so I think that's the right move. I think that uh, basically, like, Blizzard, they're it's current year right people people have ways of doing what they want to do but i i just don't think blizzard should basically allow it they sh it shouldn't it shouldn't be the kind of thing where it's like they give you tools to be able to uh exactly. collude and whatnot yeah uh next up uh, we have oh sorry you want you want to keep going no, no i agree 100 percent. yeah uh eight servers per region four pvp two pve one rp pvp and one rp pve i think the split is fine Eight servers is not going to be nearly enough if they're talking about NA and EU, and and it, it doesn't even make sense. Like as far as like having the same amount for for every region, like NA, EU, Oceanic. I mean, what do you guys think about that? So I I initially was like, whoa, that's way too little. Like obviously, but it, someone it might have been you. I think I think one of my moderators, Nodika, told me this that NA actually has three regions. There's West Coast, Central, and East Coast, and Australia might have two or something, and. Russia has however many, and Europe has however many. So there's more regions than just North America. You know, there's there might be three or four of them even. So if there's three, that's you know that's 24 regions. Who knows? Uh, it might be enough. Like I don't know. It, it like really, it depends on how big they want these servers to be. If let's say let's let's just imagine that this this information is true, um, that would mean that they have some ballpark idea of how big they want the servers to be. Otherwise, they couldn't be giving they couldn't be given uh, be giving uh, the amount of servers that there's going to be. They have to know how big they're going to be, right? So who knows? Like that—that that would actually have big implications if this is true. This is the one that made me just shake my head. Like, all right, no, no way. Um, and the reason why I think that um, per region, I mean, when it when it comes to the game itself, you log into World of Warcraft right now, and you're on NA servers. You will see on the bottom left hand side of the server list: United States, Oceanic, Latin America, Tournament, and Brazil. Okay, those are the the, the options that you see. You will see very clearly that the United States has 100 plus servers, a ton of servers. But if you go to Oceanic, they have 12 ish servers. If you go to Latin America, they only have three servers. Blizzard is a company, they want to min max their cost the same way we want to min max our characters. And for me, when it comes to expenses, why on earth would I supply lower pop servers with more servers than they need? And why on earth would I supply? Uh, uh, higher pop servers, less servers than they need. It would all be variable depending on the size of the region and how many people play in that specific region. To have a static number of servers per region, it, it seems just completely it's, off. It's, to me. it's like, weird. So let me yeah. let me let me try to like talk through. I'm I'm having an idea. Right? Let me just try to talk through this. I don't think that retail Blizzard or retail. Well, I don't have they merged servers before. I think their their decision was just to have sharding and phasing, so you can do cross servers. Though I don't I don't think that they've merged them before, so that's probably why the server count is so inflated for retail. Well, you, you mean recently? Recently, yeah. right? Um, that's probably why there's you know over a hundred servers in North America because they're, they're they're most of them are low pop, and you can just do sharding and phasing and go to your friend server. That's probably explains why there's so many of them that are very low pop. They could have a philosophy with Blizzard, uh, with classic servers, that um, they want less, but they want them to be higher population. Like that could explain why they, uh, because because you know, if you played vanilla, you understand population is very important. You, people tend to want active servers, so the best way to ensure that would make, be to make less servers, right? Yeah, yeah, but that few, that few servers. I mean, let's say they, they did split it up: East Coast, West Coast, Central. Like th those were the regions they had in mind. Um, that would be 24 servers for the U.S. Assuming they pick 3,000 concurrent pops. You know what? Let's say 5,000. Let's say 10,000 concurrent pops for these 24 servers. That's only 240,000 concurrent players at any given time. That's nothing in North America. I can guarantee you right now on retail, there's at least a couple hundred thousand people playing in North America. And we're talking about classic launch. And that's if... They pick eight servers per time zone, and they pick 10,000 concurrent pops, which they probably won't do. 
it, it just seems to me like it's a recipe for disaster. Blizzard has to know. They have to at least have some kind of inkling that the demand is going to be very high. They don't know what it is exactly, but I would be very skeptical for Blizzard to come out and say, yep, eight servers per region, you know, we'll, we'll uh, let the hype build up or something like that and, and try to make it exclusive. I just, I think you want to get as many people into the game as fast as possible just to capitalize on that hype wave. Mm-hmm. But, and, and I don't know. I mean, the, yeah. the, the thought of, like, uh, is a region like NAEU or is a region a time zone is kind of interesting because, like, yeah. like you said, stay safe. And, and we talked about this before, like, if that's what it could mean, um, it would make a lot more sense, right? To have like 24 US, or if you, if you count Hawaii, that's another time zone, right? But I, I don't know. You know, they, they probably were going to keep the three different time zones. And so, one other thing that I just thought of if you read through the translated German post that this originates from, uh, it's not in the bullet point list here, but so in the bullet point list, it's referred to as, re- as regions. Uh, in the translated uh, thing, it says eight servers per language. Just a, just a weird thing, just by the way. Um, so that would mean in Europe, you'd have eight servers per language, per, maybe eight for France and eight for Germany. Um, but in America, it all gets kind of scuffy because we only speak American over here. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Damn right. right. <laughs> yeah. Really interesting. Yeah, I, I, think that's, I think that's a big bullet point of like, that's a big skepticism one. Like, that's one where, like, I, I'm feeling real skeptical about. Um, Especially the breakdown. Like, the, the 4 PvP, 2 PvE. This would mark the first time in World of Warcraft history that Blizzard has favored PvP players over PvE players. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, for them to yeah. give more PvP servers than PvE servers. Uh, PvE servers. I mean, who knows? Again, it could be correct. Uh, maybe it has to do with time zones or something like that to make it make more sense. But... It's just it wishy-washy, you know? Mm-hmm. It's just another wishy-washy thing about this league. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, the next bullet point is no in-game shop at the start, but whenever he was translating it, when it was being translated to English, uh, it mentioned like something about an Astral Tiger potentially uh, potentially adding a, a shop for like the later on, for, the, for like the later patches or later on in the game. Uh, if that shop... I don't, dude. I, I don't want to see any of that. Like, I I don't want to see. I I understand. Like, it doesn't. Vanity pets and mounts don't really change the game. They they don't they don't really have any impact on the game. Uh, I understand that. I personally don't want to see it. But what would have an impact on the game is is if you can buy like a Baron mount or stuff like that. That would be totally right. absurd to me. Right. Now, the things I don't have a problem with the shop for pretty much is towards the end, later on, if they were to add, like, the server transfers and stuff. That's that's something that, that you know, that's Blitz like. I mean, that's that's what it was in vanilla. That's no changes, right? That's that's what they had. So, something like that, so, like, I wouldn't really mind. So, this here, in the German translation, he specifically mentions uh, an astral tiger or, you know, a spectral tiger. Um this is actually the biggest piece of information that makes me think this is a fraud. Um, and I'll tell you why. Spectral Tigers were a Burning Crusade TCG item. They were not in Vanilla WoW. Spectral Tigers are not Vanilla. They're, they're Burning mm-hmm. Crusade TCG. And someone that was going to make a fraud like this, um, not many people know that. A lot of people think it's Vanilla WoW, but it's not. Um, so that, that would probably be the kind of thing that if you were making a fraud post like this, that would be a big oversight. Yeah. Um, yeah. Or you could have secret infi- inside information that they're going to retroactively add in all the TCG stuff to, to classic WoW in-game shop. You know, who, who, who knows? But that, that was something that really stuck out to me. Yeah. Yeah. Again, how, how would somebody an employee at Activision be privy to this kind of like, you know, strategic, this strategy, basically? I, uh, again, probably the CFO, Mike Morheim, a couple of high-end executives, maybe Jalen Brack, maybe even Azacostas, maybe they know what, what they plan for uh, for the shop, but, you know, random X-name employee, worker B, uh, will probably not have access to that information. At least I wouldn't think so. Yeah. Obviously, I've, I've got to say, a, yeah. when, when talking about an in-game shop, um, a cosmetic shop, maybe they add it, Here's what Blizzard would do if they're going to do this. They would add it six months or a year after Classic WoW is out. Everyone is already very invested. They have one or two level 60s. They have their pre raid bits. They're raiding. Everyone is very invested in the game. That is the perfect time to add a shop. Because at that point, really, like, be, be really honest. If they add a, 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 a TCG loot shop in the game where you can buy a tiger if they put it in for $20 and a tavern 
game and Tabard of Frost for fifteen dollars. Are you really gonna quit the game at that point? Why? Why you gotta give them ideas, Stacey? Why you gotta give them <laughs> ideas, man? <laughs> Come on. No, no, you're you're right. But, you're right. But, yeah. Uh, to go to go further than that, um, like it, it's actually not that much of a deviation from how it was back in the day. Because back in the day in Vanilla WoW in two thousand five. You could, you could go on eBay or go to Walmart and buy a pack of TCG cards and run the chance of getting a Tabard of Fran Tabard of Flame or whatever else there was. You could buy a, you, you could buy an IRL could, loot box. You, you could buy an IRL loot box. You could buy these things. It's like there were cosmetic stuff in the day you could buy. Um, so it, it's not even that big of a deviation, to be perfectly honest. What I, do I want the shop? No. But for me, is it the end of the world? Honestly, it's not. I wouldn't quit the game over it. No, if it's strictly cosmetic TCG stuff, no, I'm, I, I wouldn't like it. But it's, I'm not going to quit over it. Yeah, co cosmetic stuff doesn't, doesn't, I guess, change how the game is played. It's just like annoying more than anything. I think I, I, I don't want to see it. I'm, I'm, I'd be annoyed by it. But whatever, right? I'm, I'm a curmudgeon old man, I guess. Um, I'm. <clears throat> go ahead. Sorry. Maybe I'm a little extreme in this, in this issue. Um, I, I personally do think that that cosmetic items do have an effect on gameplay because I think when you can purchase the cosmetic item from the shop, it strips a player of the incentive to get gear for purely cosmetic reasons. And that's one of the most beautiful things about vanilla. The end game sets objectively are more detailed and more robust than the early game sets. So part of the incentive to level up is obviously to gain power get to level 60, yada, yada, yada. But also you look at that guy with that, you know, helmet of wrath and you look at that guy with that thunder fury and that, that hand of rag those items just look objectively cooler or at least objectively more detailed than kind of the lower tier items. And the way I've seen Blizzard use their shop over the years, it seems like they leave, you know, the very unique special mounts just for the store. Like, for example, what's the, what's the vampiric bat called? Do you guys know what I'm talking about? The one in retail? I don't that, know. That, like, bat mount? It's like the only mount with, uh, like, a, a wind effect on its wings, for example. Um, the Celestial Steed at the time was, like, the only mount that was, like, so crazy detailed, like, you know, the stars and stuff like that at the time. So I feel like, in essence, when you make, um, when, when you give items, you make items available to players for money that look cooler than other items in the game, you kind of invalidate the work players put in to get cool items. And on top of that, you take away the incentive for them to, one of the incentives to get those items, which is to look cool. So that's... Well, That's where well, I'm well, here's the thing. We're not talking about items. We're talking about tabards and maybe amounts. Well, so, and, things, yeah, well, and, things, and things that yeah. aren't available in the game, right? So, like, if you yeah. have your wrath set right. or your might set, like, that's something that's available and, like, you can earn. Yeah. I, I think, like, okay, hypothetically, let's say whatever game company, doesn't even have to be WoW, added where you could buy the gear that you have to work, that you have to work towards, that you have to attain that gear. That would be really, really, really bad, right? That's, like, major pay to win. That would be terrible. But like in terms of like a cosmetic item, like you're talking like what what you're talking about is more like, um, like look at that guy in his wrath set. Look at that guy in his judgment set. Like that guy's a good player. He's earned all his gear and it's all. Awesome Zulian tiger. Look at the right. guy with Zulian tiger. Like if they well, put out a mount that looks cool in the Zulian tiger, I'd be like, yo, dude, I busted my tail off. Well, well, but, but here's the thing: the like vanilla, it just makes that mount like kind of like you didn't earn it, right? And like if it's only available like through the the shop, like. I mean, I like I I don't want to see I don't want to see cosmetic items in the shop as much as anybody, but like. Just kind of like being kind of, kind of thinking about it. Like if I saw a guy with like the Gurubashi uh, War Turtle, I don't know, just some some kind of stupid random mount. Like I'd just be like, oh, I just paid like fifteen bucks for it. Like okay, so whatever. Like it doesn't mean thing, anything to me. And in my yeah. mind, this is only TCG items. That's the only way they could accept we do this. Like let me ask you this: If Classic WoW comes out and they re-release TCG cards, you can go to Walmart and buy TCG card packs, and there's a chance to get a Spectral Tiger. Like, are you okay with that? You're just you yes. I'm okay with that. that occurred, I'm okay with that. Anything that occurred during Vanilla, I'm okay with that. I'm not going to argue with it. Do I agree so, with it? Would I do it for my, you know, in my eyes? I wish they never did that. But the fact that it was available in Vanilla, I can't argue against it. It was there. So, so, that, so then your contention is not so much about the way that it makes people look. It's just about the way that you can buy it. Then, right? Well, it, it's kind of both. I mean, I do still think that's bad game design. I don't like that they added the TCG cards in WoW at all. I, I just don't like that idea of being able to purchase something and, and have it, you know. I don't like the idea of purchasing things outside the game, giving anybody any kind of advantage, either power-wise or cosmetically in games. But the fact that it was there, it's a precedent, it's Blizz-like, it would be less, it would be more changes than no changes for me to argue that that should not be in the game. That's the way I look at it. So, so if, if you're doing no changes philosophy, these are items that were available, we're talking pets, tabards, mounts. Mm -hmm. How how would you like to see those items be reintroduced into the game? 
as faithfully as they were back in the day. So like, for example, the, the Diablo pets and the collector's edition stuff, sell a collector's edition. Um, I think that's fine. I mean, mimic it the same way it was. I think you're going to see a lot more of them, unfortunately, because I know a lot more people are going to buy the collector's edition this time around if they did that. But uh, the TCG stuff, re-release TCG cards. Totally okay with that. Um, any service, including you know the character transfers, for example, I can't argue against it, even though I don't like it, because it was available at some point in vanilla. Uh, the way they did them back then, I would be totally okay with them doing it like that today. Yeah, I mean, like, like I said... I, I just I, I just don't really care to see it. I don't I don't really want to see it. I think uh, I don't know. I I, I just don't really, personally. I just don't really care to see it. Yeah. Like, Obviously, I'm not a fan, but I, I fully expect. Honestly, I, I this is Blizzard. I fully expect six months to a year we will probably have a shop where they're selling old TCG items. I fully expect that. And and I, I'll say honestly, it, I, I am going to be very invested at that point. I'll have two, maybe three level sixties. Am I going to quit the game over people spending twenty dollars to buy a tabard or a pet? I'm not. No, it's not, not. It's not enough to make me quit. I think that I think that Blizzard knows that, and that's why they're going to do it. Yeah, it's tough. It's it's tough to argue with that logic, man. You spend a thousand hours in a game. Are you going to quit over something like that? You'd have to be a very. Uh, you'd have, it'd have to really piss you off. You know what I mean? Yeah, um, it just be kind of absurd. Um, yeah. I just I, I just, I mean, look. Here's the thing, though. It it it. I think it would be a bad idea to do that. I think. It 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 would devalue it would devalue all the stuff that people got in the past. You know what I think would be really cool? I think this would be really, really cool, is if you have that stuff on, on your main account, the original, and they don't release it at all, and I'm not talking about other stuff, I'm not talking about, oh, I got my transmog cross thing, but I'm saying you have a TCG main thing that was something that was in... Was that even vanilla? I think it was Burning Crusade. Was what? Was the TCG Burning Crusade? I there, think there the was only TCG one. Stuff in vanilla. Was there it? Was. was it the turtle? I can't remember, dude. It's been a long time. Some people are saying no, no in chat. TCG was named vanilla. I, I'd have not. to double check. The turtle was vanilla, but nothing else was. That's what I remember. See, like but something I... like that is like maybe maybe then I could like, I could justify it, but like I don't really I don't I don't want to see any sort of cross cross retail classic stuff i don't want to see any achievements or like like you you got to level 60 and you get an achievement in resale like I, I don't i don't want to see any of that i the only thing that i think would be like justifiable is if only the people who had them originally like which would only be the turtle i guess in this case i don't know but only if you had it originally then then you get to keep it in classic or something like maybe that but like I, I still don't know. I mean, just just play the game. Like that, that stuff to me is like not not that big of a, not that big of a deal. Like just just make it to where, it, like they they don't have to put that stuff in. Who knows? Like you, stay safe is more talking along the lines of what you could see Blizzard doing, because like clearly none of us really want this, but yeah. um, whatever. Yeah. So in Vanilla, there were three loot cards: Saltwater Snapjaw, Thunderhead Hippogriff, and Lando Longshot. So there, there were three loot cards in Vanilla WoW. Mm. But the leak, the leak mentions uh, just to clarify, it mentions specifically a Spectral Tiger, which is one of the things I'll say again that makes me question the authenticity of the leak, because Spectral Tigers were obviously they were a TBC thing. Yeah. yeah. Two point. Yeah. Hold on, real quick. Two point pre patch is not Vanilla WoW. That's like a. a it's beaten, been beaten to death. Like if it has a two in front of it, it's Burning Crusade. If it has a three in front of it, it's Wrath of Lich, Wrath of the Lich King, and so on. So yeah, there's somebody in the chat said that, and it's just like, I mean, come on. Yeah. Um. The vendor, hold on, hold on. The vendor for TCG cards didn't come out until two point two. Yeah, I mean, if it if it wasn't even in yeah. vanilla, then. Yeah, see, Regardless, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know because I I didn't ever I didn't ever do the TCG stuff. I mean, it kind of it kind of goes to show like how how much like I don't really care about like storm outs and stuff like that. Like that stuff is like yeah. not on not on my radar. Like because I I didn't yeah. do the TCG or anything like that. Like other people, if they want to do that, like that or if they did that, like that's fine. It's just that wasn't on my radar at all. I guess for the sake of this, like because it's because it mentions Spectral Tiger, it's like the possibility of them retroactively adding back TBC or Wrath or maybe anything else. Uh, uh, TCG stuff uh, onto a shop, you know? Yeah. I mean, yeah. I think regardless of when they were implemented, I think the point kind of still stands. 
Um, if it was in vanilla, it's very hard to argue against it. You would technically be pushing a change, which I think none of us are, are really trying to do. So it's hard to argue against it if it was in vanilla, but if it wasn't in vanilla, I would I would be very vocal against it. Um, would I quit the game over it? You got to see at the time, but uh, it, it, you know, it's tough, man. It's tough. You d you definitely don't want Blizzard to cl to cross that threshold, you know, because you're scared of what it, it might open well, up down and that, the line. That's the thing that like people are worried yeah. about, like, and it's it's more like, and that's, I I I'm a, I'm an optimistic person. I hope for the best, but like that that is the thing that people worry about is like, um, if if they were to add this, it's like oh well, like you know, kind of give them an inch, they take a mile, sort of thing. That sort of concept. That's what yeah. people would be worried about, and uh, I think that that might be something natural that people worry about. Yeah, it's a very legitimate worry. I mean, I've been very like vocal about this. One of the things that made me stop playing on private servers a long time ago was, you know, nine or ten months ago, was people yep. were selling Thunder Furies and selling duped characters and selling gold. So that's my mindset. I've played on, I've played under circumstances like that, and it's very, very bad and detrimental. So in my mind, comparatively, if if that's where it ends, is just a TCG loot shop. If that if that's all it ever goes, if that's as far as it goes, I can deal with that. I'm not going to die on that hill, you know. Yeah. Yeah, I don't I, I don't really like any of that. I I don't I don't like any uh any sort of like cosmetic in game shop or anything like that. I, I know it doesn't change the gameplay, like I understand, like I'm I'm a reasonable person, but uh at, at the same time I just personally don't want it. Um let's go ahead and go on to the next point. We were we were on that one for a long time. Um sub will be included in retail wow, or you pay less for classic only. That is something that, and again, guys, all these, all these like leaks, or, or it's totally alleged. Like we said before, like this could be any sort of like, freaking idiot who's just posting on the forums. It could be a nobody, right? But it's something fun to talk about. People have been talking about it over the course of the last day. We want to go through it and kind of give our thoughts on it. Um, kind of like a stay safe worded it. You said like as, as if like these were true. How would we feel about them? But, but I mean, we know like it's, it's not. Uh, it's it's highly highly unlikely. Uh, I I think ninety nine percent chance that they're uh, that they're fake. But um, sorry, where was I? Oh yeah, sub will be included in retail wire. Play less for classic only. I think that that makes no sense for Blizzard. I think that makes absolutely no sense for Blizzard. Now it's it's very player friendly, but it makes no sense for Blizzard. Uh, I I could never see that happening. It would be a net loss compared to the alternative, which is just charge a retail price for both games. Yeah. Like if, if I'm so, somebody that hasn't played WoW for like five years and I want to come back for a classic, um, I pay $15 to come back for classic. Why would you just charge me $5 just to come back to classic? And so, I, to, to offer more insight from this that people haven't read the German translation, uh, what they're talking about is they said, if you are currently playing, if you're currently paying for a retail WoW sub $15 USD, classic sub will be rolled into that you'll get the classic sub for free on top of that if you don't have a retail sub you you can pay seven dollars and fifty cents or half price for just a classic sub with no retail sub included so sorry i cut you off no no problem i and again from a consumer standpoint yeah i think a lot of people would like that a lot but i just don't think it makes uh, blizzard would be really really it would be very generous of them you know what i mean like, just, very generous it just doesn't make sense from a company standpoint because if you have all the subs rolled in together now all of a sudden you know when you're talking to shareholders and i was like look how many subs wow has right you yeah. talk about wow right not well we have this many classic we have this many retail it's all one thing it's all packaged together it's more money uh there are some people that just don't care there are some people that just don't care to play retail there are some people that just don't care to play classic but there is going to be a small overlap, right? There's going to be, or, I mean, there's going to be some sort of overlap, right? The middle of the Venn diagram that will play both. And, and I've talked about it before. I'm, I'm, I'm probably still going to want to play arenas because I, I just love to arena. Um, but for the most part, I'll be, I'll be playing classic, right? And I think, I think most of the people watching this are going to be playing classic, uh, if not mostly exclusively, right? I think that having it to where you can only pay... Uh, a half sub or something and only play classic takes away the opportunity for people to try BFA or to try retail. Wow. Every time they log in, they don't see like BFA show up on the screen or whatever. Um, I think, I think that wouldn't be good uh, for, for blizzard. I think that'd be great for, like, I think it's like incredibly player friendly, yeah. but, yeah. but I, 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 I think a move like this is really focused. Let's say it's real. Who knows? I think a move like this with a half-off uh, classical sub fee is, is really about player retention. 
Um, I think classic WoW requires a lot of time and some people are going to get busy. You know, they have jobs. Maybe you can, maybe you, you have a couple busy months. You can only play five hours a week or two or three hours a week. It's much easier to justify to yourself only spending 750 a month on a sub just that you're not really utilizing as opposed to $15. Like $15 is a lot more to mentally justify if you're not really, you, you, you know, you feel like you're getting less bang for your buck or less value out of what you're paying for if it costs that much. I think it's more about player retention um, and preventing player drop off. What do you think? Maybe, I mean, if that's the strategy behind it, like at the end of the day, when it comes to these financial decisions and how they monetize, logic doesn't really play as big of a role i think i think what plays the biggest role is just market research they probably they, they have no i'm guessing they have no stake in it they're just like okay let's hire some consultant or our internal financial team to go and do some research and come back and tell us what's going to make us the most money um and i think stay safe you said this i think on the last class guest or the one before uh very well um blizzard's going to do what's going to make them the most money in terms of like subs i i completely bet on them to do whatever that is um could the logic behind it be maybe it tests better to uh, to have people just retain with a with a lower price than to group it up and have people just buy it all in one sub maybe but if you asked me right now if classic was coming out next week and uh, i have the option of paying just 750 for classic or 15 dollars for both i would downgrade my sub to 750 because you know i would only resub when there's like a big bfa content patch or or a new expansion or something like that i cannot see myself keeping that 15 dollars a month um, you know, just when I know I'm going to be playing classic. Right. Yeah. yeah. I mean, again, that's, that's one more thing that like kind of, uh, I, I think throw some water on this, on these alleged leaks is, is it just doesn't really make a whole lot of sense for blizzard to do that. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, launch about April, June, 2019. That sounds great. <laughs> like, like, yeah. The sooner the better, but, uh, leak confirmed. It's good, yeah, boy. It's good. yeah. That sounds great, yeah. dude. I'd love that. But, uh, I, like we we've said it before, I don't think any of us expects it to come out any later than 2019. Um, I don't, I I just don't see, I don't see it being that early. I think it could be earlier than what we think, but uh, for it to be that early, I think it's kind of crazy. What do you guys think? I've been saying for six months within 2019 for a long time. I definitely think, but June is a six month. I definitely think that by June we'll be playing full release. Um, one thing that made me feel very good about that is the at-home playable demo. I, that caught me off guard. I thought we'd be able to play it on the floor, but to be able to play it at, at home, um, I, I think that they're, and like John Stats and Mark Kern said, companies like this, like Blizzard, they're typically six months ahead of where they're letting us, uh, than, than what they're making us aware of, right? Mm -hmm. I, I think they're probably pretty getting pretty close to being done. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I definitely think from, from getting done, I completely agree. They're very close. Um, my only reservation, you know, looking back on Blizzard's launch dates for all their expansions, um, every single one of their expansions was released between end of August to early December. And the only one that got pushed beyond that was Burning Crusade, because supposedly, I can't remember the reasoning was, but they had some problem delivering by the holiday season, so they released in, in January 15th or something like yeah, that. Yeah, it was like second week of January, third week of January. Yeah, so um, it's clearly a timing thing. I think it's going to be a timing thing. I think they're almost done. And for them, again, it's about what's going to maximize profits. What, when do we, how do we align this with our other releases? What about patch 8.1? What about possibly new yeah. Diablo and the Warcraft 3 remastered? I mean, that, yeah. that's, yeah, that's the main variable, I think. And actually, uh, if you've read the German translation um, of the original leak, he says there's a, his, his leaker, who's supposedly someone that works at Activision, who knows? Um, he said that there was another product that they are timing the Classic Web release around, but that he wasn't made aware of what that product is. That could be a new Diablo game that we'll hear about at BlizzCon. It could be a remastered Warcraft 3, a remastered Diablo 2. Who knows what it is? But that they are timing Classic WoW around another unnamed product that we don't know about yet. Right. Yeah. I, and I think... So, so the, the final bullet point is there will be an announcement in gameplay at BlizzCon, and, and this leak was posted like two days in advance uh, prior to the announcement. Um, just to kind of like wrap this thing up, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll all give our thoughts on kind of what we think about this. My personal feeling about this, and we kind of just gave our, our breakdown of uh, how, the like what we feel about the validity of this. Right, given what we what we can what we know about Blizzard, what we can assume about Blizzard, how will Blizzard approach the situation? Does this seem logical? Does it seem reasonable? I do think smoke burning. Uh, I I do think the only 
the only thing that really gives this any sort of uh gives this any sort of kind of fire to it is the fact that they he said all this stuff and then two days later they gave it the demo but pretty much like i think pretty much everything else like you can kind of like poke holes in it and this and that but i also think that this could just be like a and it more than likely is a very well thought out troll if people if if people look at this post and everything that i write can they try and take each bullet point kind of like we just did and try and link it back to something else can they can they put on their tinfoil hats and say that Damon and Viper are working for Blizzard and they're working on Classic? Can, I, I think that it's just a really well thought out troll, personally. Yeah. I mean, I I think that that's what it is most likely, and um, it's just it's just more more fun to talk about than anything. How do you guys feel? Yeah, I mean, if I if I came up to you today and I said, "Hey, the sun is coming up tomorrow," and then it comes up tomorrow, am I a prophet? You know what I mean? Like it's just. Some things are obvious. You can derive them, you know, from from precedent or looking at interviews that have been conducted. Um, I think almost every point in this was almost common knowledge, conventional wisdom, or the overall community's skepticism. I mean, that or speculation. I think that's what people were thinking. The only ones that are pretty specific are the region ones and the number of developers working on the team. The developer one, unfortunately, is unverifiable. I don't think we'll ever know what the exact number is. The region one is the only one where you can kind of point to it and be like, okay, it's either right or it's wrong. And um, yeah, I guess we'll have to see. I don't know. A lot of this stuff, it could happen. I'm not saying it wouldn't, but the leak itself overall, if I had to bet, I'd bet against it personally. So my my thought right now is in 32 days at BlizzCon, between being at BlizzCon and more information they'll give on the project and being able to play the demo, what information can we look for in 32 days from now to to decide whether or not whether uh, this leak is true or false so i think we can maybe they'll talk about a beta phase maybe they'll say hey we're only gonna have a two-week beta phase uh they could say that um colorblind mode would be another thing that could be proved correct um restriction battle net restrictions on pvp servers they'll probably speak to something among those lines they might do you think they'll talk to servers per region i don't, I don't know about that um there are definitely things that 32 days from now we could we could use to to as a litmus test litmus test to see if this is true or not. Yeah, absolutely. I think uh, yeah, the things you mentioned absolutely. Um, maybe a chance on the Nos Dev thing. I mean, if Blizzard were going to drop a big bomb or like a big community bone, that'd be awesome. Like if if like two guys come on stage, two like developers you've never seen before, and like they've got a microphone and they've got the French accent. You know what I mean? And they're like. Hello, my name is Viper. You know, like that'd be freaking hog as hell. You know, it could be really, really cool. And um, maybe they could do something like that if, if they want to reveal that stuff. Uh, it's it's tough, but but I do want to read a quote from Ian Hazakostas. Uh, this is exactly what he said about uh, BlizzCon. He said, uh, he's talking about Classic here. At BlizzCon, we will have a Classic panel digging into the philosophies that have guided us in recreating the Classic experience as well as a lot of the technical challenges and a full update on where we stand on the project. Full update. So from, from based on what Ian full. said, full. yeah, full, <laughs> I hope so. Yeah. If we take, if we take him, you know, as word, mm -hmm. hopefully leaving BlizzCon, the only question that will remain is maybe the release date or something like that. At least that's my hope. Uh, hopefully we walk out with all questions answered. Right. Yeah, well, alleged leak, alleged update, <laughs> alleged, <laughs> alleged BlizzCon. <laughs> it's all alleged. No, no, no. The the leak, yeah, the the leak is alleged, but uh, we'll we'll get some facts, um, here pretty soon. What do you think, stay safe? I'm just thinking. Do you do you think we're gonna have a launch date at BlizzCon? Are we are we gonna get that information? I, I don't think so. I so think they, I think they might talk about a beta. If anything, they they gave the BFA launch date in February. It came out in August. How many months is that? Uh, six. six months so it's going to be november i don't know i don't know if if classics launching within six months of blizzcon they they've they've done that before they've they've released release date or talked about announced release dates within that time frame i'd have a heart attack dude that's all i'm saying the convention center would blow up dude yeah. it would be insane that would that would be an april or may release you know around there which fits into the leak i guess yeah yeah wow yeah, it'd be crazy. I mean, 
what a what a first BlizzCon to go to, you know. Yeah. yeah. This will this will be really really exciting. Very very exciting coming up. I, I still just can't believe that within less than forty days we're gonna be at home on our computers playing a demo for Classic WoW. We're gonna be dueling. We're gonna be getting gold. We're gonna be looting linen cloth. We're gonna have so much linen cloth. We're not gonna know what to do with it, man. It's gonna be crazy, dude. I can't even uh, believe it. Yeah. Yeah. It's gonna be really good. It's gonna be really fun. After everything, dude. It's been so long. Nas, the shutdown, bringing it back. You think you do, but you don't. Pristine servers. And now we're here, you know? <laughs> yeah, the whole thing, dude, the whole thing. Um, guys, uh, here in a moment, we, we do want to go to, uh, I should have said this a little bit earlier, but we do want to go to Q&A. Uh, if you guys want to tweet questions at us, at TipsOutBaby, at StaySafeWarlock, at SVANTV, hashtag ClassicCast, that's what I'm going to be looking at. Um, if you guys have any questions, we'll go into Q&A, kind of give our thoughts on stuff. If you guys have any questions about anything specific. Also, please do not forget to follow Tips, to follow Stay Safe. Uh, tips out baby and stay safe tv on twitch youtube as well tips out baby stay safe tv uh and then my my twitter and my youtube as well uh those links are up on the screen or on the uh they're they're up on the screen or uh you could just uh, you could just type them out too so um let's go ahead and take we'll take some questions from the chat and then we'll go to twitter because i uh i didn't announce a little bit earlier Uh, but if you guys want to go ahead and ask some questions, it would be good. Do you guys want to talk about anything else before we kind of start taking some questions? I guess I, I sort of dodged your question earlier um, about whether or not I think the leak is true. I'll say if if it's false, I think a lot of this stuff is going to come true. I think it's 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 probably uh, it's it's a very good speculation if it's false. What do you think about that? I agree with that. Yeah. I think I, I think they basically yeah they, they they probably took like a bunch of stuff that you could infer and piece together and couple it with what some people want and kind of like have like a middle of the road type of like assumption on things. I don't know. I think it's a really good, well thought out troll, but I, I do think it's fun to talk about and a lot of people have been talking about. Well, what if this were true? Uh, how would you feel? So, for sure. Um, this question is from uh, Farfa YGO. Long-term plans for classic, like five years down the line, uh, are, are you? Ta I'm assuming you're talking about for for us and kind of like what we want to see. Um, I know for me personally, I would I would really like to play Burning Crusade. I would really really like to um, would get to be playing Burning Crusade. Or there's been some talk about like post Nax content, but I I don't think anything like that should be done until uh, after maybe like a full cycle or something like that, and 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 doing something different with that. But I, I know I personally, I, I loved Burning Crusade. Burning Crusade was my favorite expansion, and I really want to go back and, and play some Burning Crusade. Classic Burning Crusade is going to be a big, big hit, I think. Um, and and I, I think the condition, Blizzard will... I think it's very, very likely that Blizzard does it on the condition that Classic does well. If Classic does well, if they're making money off of it, then it's very, very likely that we will see Classic Burning Crusade. I think that would be very cool. Yeah, I agree hundred <laughs> percent. I have nothing to add to that. Literally, <laughs> it's okay. perfect. Yeah, yeah. I I'll say I am very, very anti custom post next content, additional content being added to classic. I'm very, very anti that. Like I don't want that at all. Um, I think a lot of problems and implications would arise out of that power creep. Just, just. Uh, I'm I'm very anti that. I will say uh, I hope I hope that they continue. Like they have a two year classic server cycle. And then that server becomes a TBC server mm -hmm. at the same time that the new TBC server is out. Um, they offer another classic vanilla server. I hope they continue to cater to this crowd. Otherwise, we'll be back two and a half years from now um, where we are right now without a classic server to play on. So I think they have to, you know, this is Pandora's box. Once they start offering new servers, they've got to keep offering them. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, we're just going to be back where we are right now without anything to, to play. <laughs> yeah. uh, I think that with a Burning Crusade release, they have to open up server transfers or character copy. That's what I would really hope. Character copy to the Burning Crusade servers as opposed to just releasing them fresh. Because if they release them fresh, there's going to be massive population imbalance uh, in favor of Horde. I mean, that's just kind of like what, what we've seen in terms of like you, you got Blood Elves and you have... Uh, I mean, just pretty much all the racials. Like uh, the, the Horde just have better racials in Burning Crusade. Um I don't know, like horde paladins, like blow alliance paladins out of the water. It's pretty bad, but um, 
I don't know. I, I think I think that would be something that's very. Uh, I think that's very important is to have is to have character copy transfer option, uh, as opposed to just releasing them fresh. What do you think about just having that original classic server just become a TBC server? Because that's that's no changes. That's what happened back in the day. You know, if it always became TBC. I think if they do that. I think if they do that, then they have to open up another vanilla server that's just like a static 1.12 server that people can just kind of go over to if they just want to play vanilla on the last patch. Because I, I think that's what people want, right? People want to play vanilla. That's, that's, that's what this whole thing is about. It's about playing classic. And I think that if we, uh, or not if we, if Blizzard goes in and takes that away with the expansion, I think that could kind of suck. But uh, yeah. I would say a lot of these people probably wouldn't mind releveling and stuff either. And, and a lot of them probably will. And play on a fresh server yeah. or whatever, but um, I mean, de definitely looking at private server behavior. We see people like the, the most hyped times of Vanilla WoW are the first, you know, first four weeks or five weeks fresh. The fresh meme people. Fresh. I think I think if they just until the end of time until humanity died out and the star and the sun burned out, I think if Blizzard just kept offering new fresh classic WoW servers, that uh, people would be eager to play them until the end of time. Mm -hmm. absolutely dude like there's something about it dude something timeless about that fresh launch just seeing everybody compete and stuff like that uh but yeah tbc hopefully fingers crossed um mm -hmm. there's actually a couple of questions here fan um about specifically the classic demo okay interesting maybe so zinsom asks how do you all think the classic demo zones will be boundaried and will you mm -hmm. personally attempt to wall jump, get out, and explore? I was, um, planning, on, I was planning on doing something. Like, just like yeah. just going across the whole border. I think there will be a zone wall. I think there will be a zone wall. Kind of like, uh, I mean, if you if you go along the walls of, of uh, if you go up to the Plaguelands and you try and run up and, like, try and run over Stratholm and stuff, and then you just eventually just, like, you hit a wall, or, like, if you're trying to fly up. Then you just like your your griffin just keeps like like the whole time, like I, I think yeah. I think you'd hit a zone wall. I think that they're probably gonna place a zone wall around like the border or something like that. I'll tell you when I was playing the BFA Alpha. I don't know if you guys tried to explore out of the zones that they wanted you to be in in the BFA Alpha six or seven months ago. You'd leave you'd leave the zone and a mist would appear and then a worm would pop out of the ground and eat you. You'd just be eaten by a giant worm that popped out. Really? And it was the funniest. Yeah, it was the funniest thing. Uh, so yeah, maybe maybe something like that would happen <laughs> in the demo i don't know <laughs> regnerus comes out and hammer stomps you that'd be <laughs> awesome but yeah probably yeah something like a zone wall um do you want to talk about the uh like uh, speaking of the classic demo and blizzcon you want to talk about the thing or a little bit later uh so. yeah i think actually i was going to do that just now uh yeah. guys we have talked a lot about a a blizzcon uh you know, we've talked a lot about blizzcon we've talked a lot about about the virtual ticket and the demo and actually something that we wanted to start doing is we wanted to go ahead and do a giveaway. We want to do a giveaway over the course of the next couple of weeks, and uh, we'll be doing one of these every week, so you guys want to make sure to tune in. But we will be giving away a BlizzCon virtual ticket uh, to a lucky winner. And let me go ahead and link this for you in the chat, how you guys can do this. is I'm going to copy this. I'm going to paste it over. So the, the giveaway is there in the chat right now. I kind of spam the chat with it so you guys can make sure to see it. Um, all you have to do is sub, follow, sub and follow to, to tips, myself, and stay safe on, uh, on the three platforms. And on each thing that you follow us on or uh, subscribe to YouTube or retweet the tweet that I announced this on. I did it right before the podcast in case you guys haven't seen it yet. Uh, you get points for that. And uh, you basically get an entry for each thing that you do. Yeah, so sub on YouTube, follow on Twitch, uh, and follow on Twitter, and then retweet the, the tweet that it was announced in. So, no, it's and, not very faded. And donate idols. your kidneys, and you got to donate your kidneys. Yeah, donate also. your kidneys. Uh, yeah, put us in your will, and you can win a $50 <laughs> virtual ticket. <laughs> but basically, for you don't have to do everything. You don't have to do everything, but for each thing you do, you get an additional entry. You get a higher chance to get it. So, um, so yeah, that's so something have Twitter. Doing. If you don't have Twitter, you can still qualify. You just, you know, you get a slightly less percentage of winning, basically. Right. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, that's that's up right now, and uh, you guys can go ahead and do that. I'll I'll, I'll post it one more time. Uh, there you go. Yeah, you guys have it too. But uh, but yeah, let me go ahead and take a question from Twitter. Uh, this was a question for, uh, or sorry, this was a question from uh, from Bryce Martin. Uh, if they aren't going to add WoW tokens to WoW Classic, and hopefully they won't, do you think they'll crack down harder on gold selling? 
I think that I, 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 I do not want to see the WoW token. I don't want to see any of that stuff. Uh, it it kind of goes back to the concept of like cross teaming and like collusion and stuff like that. People, there's, there's going to be people buying and selling gold. That's probably something that's going to happen. I don't want Blizzard to be the middleman. You know, I, I don't think that's right. I don't want them to basically like come in and uh, somebody has to farm it and do all this stuff. But uh, I don't think Blizzard should come in and be the middleman and kind of like say like it, to me that inadvertently kind of says this is OK. And uh, I, I think that's really bad for classic. I think gold is, is at such a premium and it, it's such a valuable resource. And vanilla, like imagine if, if I started, if I'm playing vanilla WoW and I hit level 60 and I'm like, 2,000 gold, and I'm playing a, a warrior or, or a paladin or whatever. Let's say I get my epic mount, I get my Lionheart helmet, I get an Arcanite Reaper. It, it, it's not good. It's not good. You get such a massive advantage over a lot of other people. It's it's not a good situation. Um, I think that'd be a bad thing. Yeah. Um, I don't want the token at all. I, don't, I would rather Blizzard uh, try and not be very successful. I think they'll be successful. You have to imagine Blizzard has the highest capacity maybe of any gaming company to crack down on this stuff. Their, their, their detection probably is very, very advanced. I want them to try. And even if they're not very successful, I think that's still better than them throwing their hands up in the air and be like, you know what? It's, oh, it turns out it's hard to stop gold buying. You know what? We're just going to foster it and facilitate it. So I don't want them to do that at all. In, in fact, uh, looking at the, at the Dev Water Cooler talk from a couple months ago, they say, uh, here's, a, here's a quote from this at the, very, at the very bottom. Additional improvements to Classic WoW will include modern anti-cheat and botting detection. So I think, I think it'll be fine. Uh, like I said, I want them to try at least. And uh, just like out of, out of principle, I want them to try and not foster it. I agree with that, Swan. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah, me too. 100%. 100%. Get those criminals out of here, dude. <laughs> those gold sellers, in. they're not bringing their best, dude. Let me tell you. <laughs> uh, uh, so many questions, dude. <laughs> yeah. The. Okay. It's from Mixum. Uh, is it possible the demo will be offline? I don't think so. I, I think, uh, yeah, Discord, Discord is lagging. It's not, it's not on our end. We have very good internet. Uh, the best internet. So, so yeah, Mixum is asking if the, if the demo will possibly be offline. I think that, um, uh, I think that's highly unlikely. I don't, I don't think they'll do that. I mean, it, it doesn't really make sense to me. Right. Like they're, I mean, the, the original game's not offline. Right. So I don't think they would have an offline version of the demo. I agree. I don't see what the point is. It's an online game. I'm not sure. I mean, you have to ask yourself with this demo, is Blizzard going to be acquiring information, statistical player information? Are they going to be using this to get information from us, or are they not going to be taking notes to get information? Of course they're going to be trying to get information. This is a stress test of sorts, of sorts I think. Um, if it's offline, then they don't get any of that, right? Or not nearly as much. So I, it's an online game. I think there will be, it, it's going to be an online demo. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, this one comes from Atlas on Twitter. He says, what starting zones do you think will be available at the demo? Would love to see Dwarf, Gnome, and Orc Troll. I think I agree on the second one, um, just because of the whole, you know, Quillbore thing. But Gnome, Dwarf doesn't really match up with the Defy stuff. What do you guys think? Uh, I think it doesn't match up, but I, I don't think it would be a bad idea to have... Because, like, you have Orc and Troll together, and you have Gnome and Dwarf together. <clears throat> so that would give people more... Uh, more options, but I, I think the human starting zone is a little bit more iconic. So, and I it agree. also matches I, up better. I've heard that question raised, you know, if, if you're going to start in Duratar, that's obviously where the trolls are and the orcs as well. Um, if, I, if I had to bet money, I think it'll be human orc. I mean, those are obviously the two most iconic races of World of Warcraft. I think it'll mm -hmm. probably just be human and orc. Do, do you guys think that they'll, they'll put in the other races and it just spawns you in the other starting areas? Nice. Assuming assuming you're in a starting area, right? We're, we're, this is all assumption. That'd be nice just to see the racials, you know? But yeah. uh, I doubt it. I wouldn't get my hopes yeah. up about that. Yeah. Uh, extra so I think work. there's any, any chance to keep our demo progress. I They've never done that before with any game that they've tested or demoed. I, I don't think so. Mm -hmm. Oh, it means like progress. Like once we finish the demo, we'll be able to use right. that character. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, high, highly unlikely. That'd be a very, I think, unfair advantage. This is a good um, question, and and uh, kind of to to kind of close the book on this. 
if graphics are updated more than just resolution, like like higher resolution textures or, or effects and stuff like that, um, how much of an impact do you feel that will have? And just kind of to, 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 like I said, kind of close the book on this, I think that if they're changing animations, it has like kind of inadvertently has balance uh, implications, you know, more, more, um, more visible spell effects kind of say like, hey, purge me, hey, dispel me, whatever. Uh, I think the new models would not be cool because, I mean, you got the new models in the new game. Let's have the old models in the old game. You can't even go back to the old models in the old game at this point. So uh, I think maybe that's uh, first off, I like them. I love them. I, I love the old models. But uh, I, I do think even from like a little bit of a nostalgia standpoint, I think that's what people would want to see whenever they're playing WoW Classic. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah, like like I said earlier, uh, actually, right now, if you if you open up, uh, a, there's some, there's a console you can open up for Vanilla WoW. If you have a 1.12 client, you can actually, if you enter in a, a set of commands, you can make Vanilla WoW look much better. And this these are graphic settings that aren't actually integrated into the interface. You have to use the console to do it. But the the capacity has always been there. Um, I imagine these upgraded um, graphics and animations will be among those lines, things that have always been there but weren't actually just, that, that you weren't able to just flip a switch within the game, within the interface. Uh, that's yeah. sort of what I'm expecting. Yeah. Yeah, yeah as S wants that, different animations, that's that's actually a much bigger deal than people think it is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, question from the Darker Clouds. This one's kind of cool. Uh, what types of troll things do you think Blizzard will do in the WoW Classic demo? For example, a level 120 hogger or something like that. Like back in the uh, back in the original <laughs> vanilla beta, they they unleashed infernals I think all over the world and stuff like that, or like an Induratar. Um, Blizzard used to do a lot of cool stuff like that. They would have GMs come into the game and like summon Rag like in the middle of like Valley of Trials or something like that. So, do I think they'll do something cool in the demo? I freaking hope so. I think it'd be uh, funny. But, yeah. Yeah. It might if they do anything like that, just to like mess with people. It, it'll probably be towards the end. Yeah, old yeah. Blizzard Pepe hands. Yeah, yeah, yeah. no, I um, I think if they do anything like that, it would be more than likely towards the end. Like I, I could also see somebody like <laughs> I could also see the freaking classic WoW forums, the official WoW classic forum is just like up in uproar. Like oh, Blizzard sees this game as a joke. They're not taking this demo seriously. Just like dude, come on, like. I could also see that happening, uh, and I could also see Blizzard being afraid of that happening and not doing it. So, which is, I mean, I, me personally, I'd be like, dude, screw it. Like, like yeah. <laughs> if if you go back and watch an actual vanilla 2004 open beta footage, GMs were running around morphed as rats, one shotting players. Like, <laughs> it was just their playground. Like, it, it, I don't know. Yeah. Just like suck it, guys. Uh, you I, know what? I, I hope know. stuff like yeah. that happens. I hope it happens again. I want it. You know what would be cool? If they took away the borders on the last day and let people, like, filter into, like, Red Ridge or something, like a big raid, just Horde versus Alliance, the last day, get everybody fighting against each other, Battle Royale style, last man standing, and then just wipe the servers. That'd be awesome. Mm -hmm. And, guys, again, one more time, we are uh, – well, just a little update on the giveaway. The giveaway for the virtual ticket is, is still in the chat. I'm going to keep posting it. But um, – that's going to we're going to announce the winner of that giveaway at the next classic cast so so people watching on youtube you guys are going to have a chance as well uh this will be this will be in the comments below uh I, I usually comment on all my videos that whenever i post them so this will be in the comments below as well and uh you guys can get your chance at a uh, at a virtual ticket and that'll get you the uh wow classic demo as well so as well as everything else that it comes with yeah so very very exciting i'm sure Uh, I saw another question here. I might have lost it here. <clears throat> um, I hope I didn't lose it. I see one here. Since sharding is inevitable, is it game breaking for you or not really? Because otherwise, servers will crash. Um, I guess I disagree with the two assertions you made. I don't think sharding, sharding is inevitable, and I think that the servers are capable of not crashing. Mm -hmm. uh, but but yeah, sharding is a very big problem. It probably would be a deal breaker for me. Yeah, I, I, I really, I really, really, really do not want to see that. Uh, this is from EU Paladin. Uh, he says that he thinks achievements would be a, be a, it would have had a huge factor into assuming that Blizzard's going to add an in-game shop. So the good news is that they're not going to have achievements, and they've already, they've already said that there's going to be no achievements and no transmog. So in the Dev Water Cooler update that they had a few months back, they said that their goal was to not have anything in the game 
that wasn't in the game post vanilla and they specifically stated you know it's like okay what do they mean by that i don't know but they specifically said no transmog and no achievements uh whenever they were giving examples of things that would not be in the game so that's something that uh i, I know i'm personally am, am happy with that I, I i do not want to see uh achievements or transmog in vanilla yeah i'll read that off real quick uh they, i'll pick up here this would inherently include classic systems like skill ranks old quests and terrain at towns and so on while later features like transmog and achievements would effectively not exist because they are entirely absent from the data. So yeah, pretty much TLDR. If it wasn't in vanilla, at some point it will not be in classic. That's my takeaway from that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, Epiclesis. Why would it be bad to get achievements or achievements or whatever on retail if you play or get something in classic? Uh, he says that that would not directly affect anything in classic apart from bringing in more players. Uh, do you guys want to? Do you guys want to? share your thoughts on yeah. this yeah I'll, I'll chime in on this one um i think at the end of the day there are certain precedents you don't want to cross and there are certain walls you don't want to cross you don't want to set certain precedents one of them would be for the two games to have any kind of connection whatsoever um i don't like the idea of you know somebody suggested this in the past use your wow token to buy class or classic time or something like that because it always leaves the door open for the inverse effect for something in classic to change retail, and that would have devastating gameplay consequences. But um, specifically to this thing, uh, it wouldn't affect me personally, but I would actually think retail players would be upset. I mean, imagine if you, you know, I don't know, like, I don't know if you get like an achievement for having full tier three or something like that, but I know some people have suggested the transmog pieces you acquire in classic could be used to transmog in retail. I mean, dude, imagine if you just got like chromatic, uh, chromatically tempered, not chromatically tempered sword, was it chromatic blade? What is it? Chromatic what? sword? Chromatic blade. The one that oh, chops off the Oh, CTS, CTS. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, chromatically tempered C sword. That's the BWL one. What's the one that drops off of the basilisk and stranglethorn veil? Oh. I can't remember. Okay, I don't know. It's like, it's it's just like a, it's a green sword. Chromatic, chromatic sword, yeah. Chromatic blade. Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh. It's a chromatic sword. It's like a rainbowish sword that drops off of a rare in vanilla, which is not, you know, you can farm it. It's not that difficult to get in vanilla, but in retail, it's worth like tens of millions of gold or something like that. Imagine being able to get that sword in vanilla relatively easily and then having it as transmog in retail. I think people in retail would be pissed because that would kind of invalidate their efforts. Yeah, Stuff, I, yeah. I, I hope and I, I don't expect something like that will happen. Or like if you farm full tier three in vanilla wow you're going to get it unlocked in retail wow but what i fully expect and this has happened with literally every blizzard game ever you know if you play hearthstone you can get a mount in wow if you play wow you can get a spray on skin in overwatch if you play wow you can get a skin on starcraft 2 there is cosmetic over a uh, crossover like that to incentivize game purchases um i fully expect something like that i think if you play classic wow you will probably get something um, in retail WoW, I hope it's not vice versa. I hope you don't get something in Classic WoW. I don't want to say that in Classic WoW, but if, if they're giving people a pet in retail WoW, um, I, I don't think we need to incentivize people to play Classic WoW. Um, I think Classic WoW has enough merit to stand on its own. It's genuinely a good game, but I fully expect that if you're playing retail WoW, you will probably get a pet or something. I fully expect that, just because that's what they've done with literally every other Blizzard game. Yeah, yeah. I, I think uh, the big thing for me is I don't want people playing classic for no i don't want people playing classic no i i don't i don't want people to, to who are playing classic to do something in classic only to get an achievement on retail and take away from somebody who might be maining classic or something like that like let's say um let's say there was like transmog or achievements or stuff like that hypothetically like imagine a corrupted ashbringer drops right not not only the point that tips made where you were talking about like it kind of it, it takes away from the people who got it originally but on top of that, it takes away from the people who want to get it now in Classic. And it's like, I, I want to use that for my myself to play. Like, I, I don't want to have somebody else take it just because they want it for... Like, they take it on their Hunter that they're running Knacks with because they want it for Transmog on their Warrior on retail. Like, dude, come on. I mean, you're a Hunter. You probably want it anyway. <laughs> like, just because you're a Hunter, you want everything. But I, I, I really do not like that. Yeah, I'm, I'm really not a fan of that. Just keep the games separate, man. Mm -hmm. I mean, just keep them separate. They're, they're separate games. Keep them separate. I'll also say, if the type of player that is crossing their fingers hoping uh, 
to, to get T3 unlocked or Corrupted Ashbringer appearance unlocked in Retail WoW if they get a Corrupted Ashbringer in Vanilla WoW. If that's, if that's someone's desire, uh, to put it politely, you're not the type of player that's going to ever get a Corrupted Ashbringer <laughs> Very in, in Vanilla WoW. Yeah. You, don't, you don't have to worry about that. Yeah. No. I just I don't want to even deal with it like as a as a guild raid leader like I just like God really, I don't know yeah I think you're right I think they, they might not even get to that point, but uh, it might not it might not even be a thing, so, um, what would oh this is from Dashimu what would be your thoughts if the subs were unconnected and each was fifteen dollars, uh I I would not like that, I mean I I think what would happen if that ha like if that were the case, uh I think that. Blizzard would be basically cannibalizing their own profits, right? Now, it's like, okay, well, if you're just paying 15 for both, then whatever. It's like, sure, but you're cannibalizing it in terms of you're taking away the potential for them to play the other version of the game. Um, I think that would be something that's really bad. I know for me personally, like, if I still want to arena, I might... I, I may or may not, I don't know. I, I might just, like, not arena if I just want to play Classic then. Like, if I'm... I don't know. I don't know what would happen for me personally. Like, you'd have to see how that plays out in the future, but uh, or in this this hypothetical future. But uh, I don't think I, I don't think that would be a good idea for them to do. I think that would be a really, really, really bad idea for them to do. Actually. Yeah. Yeah. Do, do you guys have anything to add to that? Tips, tips. Go ahead. Oh, uh, just uh, they should not split their player base. Like, there's no reason to, especially when the alternative is to keep their player base together and establish a symbiotic relationship between the two games. It's a lot more uh, uh, desirable for me to play retail after Classic comes out if I know that I don't have to pay an extra subscription. And let's say, you know, six months down the line after Classic is out, we've been farming MC, a little bit of a content lull. Maybe I'll go check out the new retail patch or the new retail expansion or something like that. It's a lot easier to cross over when I know I don't have to pay an extra sub. Um, and that would kind of keep me within the World of Warcraft ecosystem. I would not stop playing the game. I would not get out of the loop. I would still be sub to out. And I do think that when Bl if Blizzard does decide to link the subs, which I hope they do, there's going to be – I'm just going to be sub to WoW for the rest of my life, dude. <laughs> like, why would I unsub? You know, there's always going to be content, whether it's Classic or TBC or the new, the new patch or the new expansion of the modern game. I'll try it all. So – I think that's something that, that a lot of players feel as well, and that it will definitely keep players connected and sub to the game for much longer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I think that I, I actually I'm actually very happy with this leaked uh, sub model. I think the shared sub is wise. You get the bonus classic uh, uh, subscription if you're already playing for retail, and if you don't, if if you really just don't want to play retail, you can pay some fifty for classic. I think that's I'm perfectly fine with that. I don't think I don't really see any big problems with that. Um, I think Tip, Tips and S Fawn are really right about the ecosystem, healthy ecosystem. Um, yeah, I think it's in their interest. Like you have, you have sort of zealots on both sides of the fence. You have vanilla WoW extremists, and you have you have uh, retail WoW extremists, and they like to think that you can only enjoy one game or the other. I think it's actually perfect. This might be surprising, but it's perfectly possible to both enjoy BFA and also enjoy vanilla WoW, and still at the same time understand that um, that they're very different games. I think it's possible to enjoy both of them. Mm hmm. Uh, we're going to take a few more questions, guys, before we wrap it up. Um, just a few more questions, because we are we are running short on time. Uh, after this, uh, I, I'll stream for a little bit after this, maybe half an hour or so. And then, uh, and then stay safe. You're going to stream a little bit later tonight as well. Uh, and then I'll, I'll host into you after I'm done with my stream. I'll, I'll just do a quick little short stream, because I didn't stream earlier today. But, um, yeah, the after-party streams. Yeah, exactly, after-party streams. So, uh, Rock My Burst... I think this is a good question. Uh, do you think that they'll let us buy mount training as it was in the start of vanilla, or like it was in later patches? Also, do you think that the non-armor epic mount versions will be in at all? Uh, I would like to see them. I would like to see the non-armored epic mounts. So what, what, what Rock My Burst is talking about is two things. Uh, I believe it was until patch 1. Th was it 3 or 1.4 that uh, they got rid of the unarmored epic mounts? I believe it was 1.4. 1.4. They got they got rid yeah. of unarmored epic mounts. It was, it was very 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 early on, but originally the epic mounts did not have any like sort of special armor to them. They were just like different colors. Uh, at least for humans, it was like that. Uh, and then also originally, I think the mounts were really expensive and the training was super cheap. Epic mount training was very cheap, but then the mount itself was really expensive, and they flipped it. 
Yeah, they they flipped it later on uh, to where the training was really expensive and then the mounts were super cheap just so people could buy multiple mounts or whatever uh, and only have to pay the big fee once. I think yeah. that they that they'll have it that way. I think I think that it'll be it'll be the the final version of it as it was in 1.12. I hope that's how it was. You're right. So back in early vanilla WoW, this is actually this is actually 90% of vanilla WoW. So they changed the mount trading system and the mount prices. I think in patch 1.11. Uh, so prior to 1.11, you had Kodo training, you had horse training, you had mechanic strider training. Each one had their own training, and it was very cheap. It was 10 gold, and then the mounts themselves were much more expensive. Uh, and up until 1.4, they had unarmored mounts, unarmored, unarmored epic mounts. So um, sort of the epic mounts, the 100% speed mounts, looked very similar to the level uh, 40, 60% mounts. On top of that, and this is like a bit of a gold-making tip, I guess. Maybe I shouldn't tell you guys. Um, up until 1.4, up until 1.4, every mount you bought was BOE. Um, True. So if you get exalted with uh, rep with uh, with your alliance reputations, for example. Um, you can buy an unar un unarmored knight saber, um, an unarmored one. They'll be very rare because they're not going to ex to exist after 1.4. You can sit on them for months and months and months, and you can sell one of the OG unarmored knight sabers or unarmored horses, whatever you want. You can sell it down the road because um, it will it will it will remain BOE. That's how it was in vanilla one. You can make a ton of gold. You can make a ton of money doing that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, here's a question from uh g dan and i think it kind of falls in line with like the idea of fresh servers thoughts on making wild classic ladder base where there's a hard reset after a 12 or 18 month cycle i i don't like the concept of a hard reset i i think w one of the problems with private servers over the years is that you never know like if you're going to get to keep your character right at any moment somebody could take the server down something could happen well now it's like okay it's happening for sure you're losing all your stuff for sure with a hard reset but um uh, the concept of adding fresh servers after a certain period of time, I think, would be something that uh, that's something a lot more feasible and something that I think should happen. And, and Stacey, if you were kind of talking about that a little bit earlier, um, now I don't think they should add a, they should release fresh servers in the middle of a cycle of vanilla WoW because what that happen what, what what that causes to happen is that it it'll kill off. And people who are playing the other version of the game will be like, oh, let's go to fresh. And then they just, for, for whatever reason, right? I mean, some people like that. Some people don't like that. But there will be a large portion of people that they feel like, man, I screwed up. I didn't get into the best guild or I got behind or I started late. Well, I'll just wait and I'll go fresh. And what ends up happening is it ends up killing off that server uh, because there is an obsession with fresh. And uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. So... Yeah, it, it, it creates this culture of just never really, you know, investing in one server um, and just perpetually waiting for a, for a new fresh server. And I think having that investment is important. I would I would really say only have fresh servers maybe every two years. I, yeah. I guess once that I don't want them coming out every six months because I'll tell you, every time a fresh server comes out, the current old uh, unfresh server, it, it just dies. Or if it doesn't die, it takes a huge population hit. Yeah, like it should be, I think it was six months after Nax, or so, it was about six months after Nax released, it's whenever the 2.0 patch, the Burning Crusade patch went in, um, and then Burning Crusade, the expansion itself, launched uh, in January, so I think it should be like a six or seven month period after after Nax launches, that they the, then that's whenever they can think about putting out a, uh, a fresh server, sorry. Yeah. The mm -hmm. only situation, the only scenario I see them putting out fresh servers before that is if they just don't have enough servers at the launch or something. But how mm -hmm. did they do that back in vanilla? Wait a minute. When they would release new servers, would they be on the same patch as every other server or would they restart the patch? They would cycle? be on the same patch. They'd be on the okay. same patch. Yeah. So yeah. The, the appeal of fresh wasn't really there, you know? They yeah. launched yeah. on 1.9 or whatever. Well, like, I, I think what happened was it was after 1.9 or maybe it was on 1.9. Uh, they would release some new servers to to accommodate the growing game, the growing population of the game. And I specifically remember going on one of these low pop like new servers, and I think it was towards the end of vanilla, and they still didn't have AQ40 open. Like the war effort was still going on, and I just thought it was insane, right? Because I, I played on Illidan and and uh, later Kelthuzad, and those were servers that were uh, historically have kind of been popping off uh, throughout WoW, but. Uh, but yeah, it was very, very funny. I don't know. I don't remember what server I went to. Maybe like Zul'jin or something. I don't know. I, it was it was some random server. Um, I have no idea. But uh, 
but I, I just thought mine. that was so funny back in the day. Mine those copper ores, dude. <laughs> yeah, you just start mining, dude. For sure. Uh, here's another good question. Do you think it's possible that the demo is a stress test? And do you think it's possible that... Uh, do you think it's possible that including this is the virtual ticket is the... Hold on. Is a way to offset project cost in case they don't meet their projected numbers? Uh, I, I don't... I, I would say the virtual ticket has nothing with like nothing to do with like offsetting any sort of cost and projected numbers. I, I think more than anything, they're trying to increase the value of the virtual ticket, right? The virtual ticket's 50 bucks. Well, let's just like pack more stuff into that 50 bucks so you get you get more for it. And uh, on the flip side of things, there are going to be a population of people who are just going to pay fifty dollars to get to play classic for a week, play a classic demo for a week. Um, I, I think I think that's kind of the main thing about it. But uh, Stay Safe actually mentioned it earlier about the classic demo being likely seen as a stress test, and I agree. I, I believe Tips, you agree as well. Uh, I, I think it's going to be big. Yeah. Yeah, I, th I think it's definitely a stress test. I think they're going to be taking notes and taking measurements and taking analytical information. Um, I, they might be testing different variables on different servers. Like you might not even, you might not even be aware of the variables or the type of server you're playing on. The server you load into on the demo might have a 2000 population cap with a slightly slower respawn rate. So they're going to see how that plays out. Uh, there might be another server that you randomly load into that will have a 5,000 population cap with slightly faster respawn rates. And they're going to test these things potentially, who knows? Um, that's, that's what I would do. That's what makes sense to me. So uh, we'll see, we'll see. Mm -hmm. let's take one more question let's take one more question uh from the chat let's take one more question from the chat um uh, before we wrap it up and and before uh i'm gonna go off to my stream and we'll, we'll do that here and then uh stay safe we'll stream a little bit later on um let's see hmm do you guys see anything that that, that sticks out to you take a look here um people keep asking about um what's our ideal patch 1.13 what do you guys think about 1.13 you guys you guys know how i feel i am very very anti 1.13 i want a replay of classic wow and or tbc and tbc yeah do do we want to open up that can of worms now i think it, i think i i think a 1.13 could be interesting but i just don't think it should happen until uh, after a full cycle of classic yeah same thing. Full cycle of classic. I wouldn't mind the extra content so long as they preserve the original vanilla servers and maybe they do a couple of these fun servers, post next servers. I'm totally cool with that. Um, I, I just, uh, yeah. I mean, honestly, if they were really going to go through with it, I'm probably against the grain in the sense that I don't want to see the stuff that was all done in vanilla, like the Dragon Isles and um, or, or Dragon Isles, no, but, but like I don't want to see Karazhan or, or Caverns of Time because we already got that. I'd like to see something new that we never got, whether it be something like the Dragon Isles, a Shara Crater, or something brand new that they've just developed. But the, the likelihood of going to 1.13, I think, is very, very, very small, especially when you have the alternative of TBC. And if they did it, they would have to do it right. They'd have to preserve the original vanilla servers. And then maybe you can transfer onto these 1.13 servers or something just for fun. Nah. Yeah. Very I mean, small possibility of it happening. Yeah. Not only do, not only do I not want it, I think it's not going to happen. I mean, do you think Blizzard, yeah. if Blizzard's going to be introducing new custom content with perhaps new lore and gameplay experiences and storytelling experiences, is Classic WoW the tool that the device that they're going to do that on? Like, no. is is Classic WoW the place to introduce new lore and story? I think absolutely not. Like, I, I just, I don't want it, and I don't think they're going to do it. I think it's very unlikely. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see. It's it's gonna be a it's gonna be a very interesting thought, and we might uh we might open up that can of worms someday, but I, I feel like we could talk a lot about that. Um, but for now, guys. Anyways, guys, thank you so much for joining us here for <laughs> class cast number fourteen. Uh, a lot of stuff to cover, a lot of stuff to talk about. We had a lot of fun, a lot of speculation. Uh, like I said before, please, please, please. Go follow Tips Out Baby on Twitter, YouTube, and Twitch. Follow Stay Safe TV on Twitch and YouTube. Stay Safe Warlock on Twitter. And then uh, if you haven't already, uh, follow myself as well. And you know what? If you do that, 
you're going to be eligible for this giveaway, which you need to go on the links, do it through there, or, or like click through it. Even if you've already followed us, click on those so that it verifies it in the system. Put your username in there so that so that we know who to contact, and uh, we will announce the winner of the the very first classic cast giveaway. By the way, the very first classic cast giveaway, we will announce the winner at the uh, at the beginning of the next classic cast. So yeah. stay tuned for that. No yeah, guys, thank you very much for watching. This is number 14. What, did we start these in December? I think, I think, I think late January, early January? February. It might have been wow. the beginning of February. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty crazy. And BlizzCon's oh, wow. a month away, dude. I know. It's going to be good. Hopefully. Yeah. Thank you so much for joining us, guys. We'll see you guys later. Peace.